Hey, how you doing, everybody? It's me, Waddles, and welcome to part one of the Minecraft Guide movie. As you may know, the Minecraft Guide is my survival Let's Play series with a twist. Every single episode has a topic, say, bees. And while we talk about bees, we talk everything about bees. In our world here, we've progressed so far already, and we're nowhere near even done. But today, we take a look back. In this movie, we'll see our world grow from the earliest stage of Minecraft all the way up to an efficient mob farm. So friends, it's time to tap that like button, grab some snacks, sit back, and relax. Minecraft Guide Chapter 1, the movie, Part 1. So please, please let me be frank with you, this moment right here is a moment I've been looking for for ages now. It's been so long since so we did the guide, I cannot wait to be back. For this world right here, we're gonna go with basically default uh, yeah, settings here, other than this one right here. I'm gonna go ahead and bump that up to 8, we'll talk more about it later, it's gonna make it bodacious. The world seed? Oh, yeah, yeah, world seed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. For legal reasons, this image is blurred right now, but we, we'll come back to it a little bit later on in the episode. For now, I just want to play some Minecraft. So, bump it up the hard difficulty, and let's go. We'll let the world load for a second, and... <laughs> oh my gosh, we made it a little scary at first, but wait, wait. What is that sound that I'm hearing? Echoing gently throughout my ears from a distant Swedish meadow, a land far, far away. Oh, the violins, they get louder and louder. At least I think they're violins. Oh, <sighs> we're in that brash new world. It smells beautiful. <laughs> it sounds beautiful. And <laughs> I can't wait for this moment. I'm so happy. <sighs> Minecraft guide. <laughs> Minecraft guide. The new Minecraft guide. We're back. The sun slowly rises over the world. It's a beautiful world spawn. Look at what I found for us, guys. We got a forest biome right here. We got flowers, the most delicate of flowers ever. We got taiga trees. We got a mushroom. We got a river right here. And oh my, what is that? The sky tower. We got a sky tower at World's One too. Minecraft guide, brand new Minecraft World 1.20. My life is complete right now. I'm so happy. I, I don't even know what to do. As I watch the sun slowly rise over the sky on day one, I'm, I'm wasting time. We should get to work. For today's episode, episode number one, we got a simple goal going on here. And first things first, we walk over to the oak tree. It's the only way we can start things. We chop it down, drop a log on the ground, and pick it up. Recipes, we're in, my friends. We're in, we're in. Welcome to the Minecraft Guide. This right here is the very first crafting table of the world, and just like that, it's part of the tree. We return it back to nature. Now look, I'm not going to be too sentimental about things inside of this world, but that's a very special tree. I don't think, legally, we can finish chopping that one down. We're going to have to leave it like that forever. If I need a new crafting table, I'll have to make a new one. If I need more wood, I'll, I'll have to find a new tree and chop it down. Now, Minecraft Guide. Oh, it, it's been so long since I've actually made a Minecraft Guide episode. I think we're due for a little bit of a short explanation. The Minecraft Guide. What is it? The Minecraft Guide is not only the freshest Minecraft series around, but it's also kind of like a, a tutorial guide vibe series. This is a Minecraft series that is being kicked off inside of 1.20, and we'll just see how far we can take it. It's a series for new players, it's a series for old players. This is a series for short kings, it's a series for a, a tall queens, lads, laddies, and everybody. It's a series for everyone. In this series, we're going to do it all. Including inside of this series, we will make our very first wood tools. It's time. Oh, it's finally time. I wasted only like half of the day. Let's go ahead and actually make our very first device. All right, so for today's episode, we got a simple goal, a couple things in mind. What I like to do is get ourselves established inside of this beautiful land a little bit. To pull all of this off, we make a brand new set of wooden tools right there, pick them back up, and, and let's stop wasting time. How the day's going? When you make a brand new Minecraft world, there are a couple things you're going to want to get to right off the bat. Before the first night time, on day number one, you're going to want to find your bed, you're going to want to find food, and maybe you're going to want to consider finding some kind of shelter. All of that is going to amount to bed, food, shelter, or boofs for short. <laughs> hey, look, Cole! Oh, wow, this world is wonderful. Bed, food, shelter, bed, food, shelter. It's time we start venturing out a little bit from world spawn. We need to look around inside of this forest or maybe the taiga behind us for a sheep or two or three. Poor sheep, which poor sheep? Where are you? Poor sheep. I see you over there. Hello, my friend. Ah, poor sheep, poor sheep. I'm so sorry about what I'm about to do. Look away, look away. You want to feel a thing. I'm sorry. We will have to find three sheep on day number one. Sheep number one, check done. Sheep number two, don't look, don't look. I, I'm so sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. We'll, we'll make a tribute. 
And shape number three. Good friend, dear friend. I'm, s I'm so sorry. However, it was a necessary cost. With three wool, a check down. Bed is basically done. So if you didn't know, if you didn't hear about it somehow, Minecraft, it's a game all about mining and crafting. And in this game, all about mining and crafting, we're going to have to get ingredients to actually go ahead and mine. And Well, I, you don't really need ingredients to mine, but you need ingredients to craft things. Where was that beautiful tree that I set up a second ago? Hmm. Somewhere over here. Ah, ah, the very first water in the world. You know, I have a newfound interest in real life of water, swimming, kayaking, going into the water in general, and just, just... Just going in the water. Yeah, yeah, perfectly put. Anyways, it's time for that very first honorary bed. Of course, you know how it goes. We will make the bed just like that, and then legally, we have to turn this bed into something a little bit more special here. We'll need a little bit of red dye. Found that from the ground. And just like that, the very first red bed, beautiful, of the world. Beds are pretty much the ticket to success inside of a brand new Minecraft world. With a bed created, you will not have to deal with anything bad until you want to deal with anything bad. Red bed, red bed, my friend, we will use this to set our spawn, we will use this to skip the dreadful night time. Now, with the bed out of the way, going in alphabetical order here, next up, it's time for food. We're gonna need to find food inside of this world. When it comes to food, we got a lot of different options. If you're near a body of water, one of the best options and one of the easiest things in the world is salmon, sweet salmon. With a wooden sword and a body of water right next to us, carefully, we can swim around in the water and smack some of the salmon out of existence, straight out of this world, and into our inventory. Because of how mobs want it works in Minecraft, salmon is not only going to be insanely easy to find early game, if you can find like a river or something, but also all you have to do is walk away from the river, walk back over, and more should have spawned. However, if we eat it like this, it's raw. We're not really getting its full potential here. Or... <laughs> Did I even get any potential? I, I got a little. So salmon is a pretty amazing find, but if you're near a taiga, my friend, there is another food that you can find inside of this thing, and it's so easy to farm too. You don't even need water or anything. You basically just need like a little bit of time. <sighs> and, and look at this, so sentimental all over this world. We have mobs all over the place. We have pig friend, we have sheep friend, we have chicken friend, we have sheep tree friend. I didn't even know you could climb. <laughs> you're so strong. Look, I'm sorry. Since I last recorded this series, my attention span has skyrocketed through the floor. <laughs> All right, anyways, this is almost nighttime. On Minecraft, inside of your world, on day number one, eventually the sun will set. As soon as the sun starts to set and get a little bit darker, it's gonna get dangerous. I recommend dropping that bed that you got on the ground anywhere and jump into the thing. You don't even really need to worry about a house because if you're quick here, you jump into bed and just like that, day number two has begun. Now here's the plan. On day number two, we're gonna really hunker down here and get on that survival grind. We are going to scavenge this entire taiga biome right here for the one specific thing that I'm looking for. Though this food may not be a little bit better than salmon, it's gonna be food that I can eat without cooking, like right from the start, which is absolutely amazing. While we run around here inside of this taiga biome sentimentally together here, I would like to play a little game. Back near the beginning of this episode, when I was creating the world, I picked a world seed, but it's top secret information. For now, there will be a seed reveal on episode number five. Unless, unless, my friends, with just one hint, you are able to guess it down in the comments below. The world seed for this world is a word, and it is four letters. It relates to something somehow, but I already gave you too much information. If I am so enticed, so convinced by the correct guess down in the comments below, I will reveal the world seed to this world a little bit earlier than expected. But that will require a little bit of consistency, smart thinking, and grinding from you guys. Let's see if you can guess it down below. Friends, terrible news. I'm so sad to report that on this roller coaster of an episode, we now hit a low point. It's very sad. We may have just picked up our very first spruce log of the world, the most beautiful wood type, or maybe most second most beautiful wood type now, but. But sadly, I was not able to successfully locate the thing that I was looking for. But it's fine. It's fine. For the sake of moving the episode along, we will unfortunately have to abandon that project, but I promise, my friends, we will come back to it later. Rivers. I would like to talk a little bit about rivers, because early game, rivers are absolutely amazing. What I recommend doing early game is conserve your running as much as possible. If you have a body of water near your world spawn and you would like to explore, try and utilize that body of water. Now, you gotta be careful because drowned may exist inside of that body of water, so swimming, eh, it might not be exactly the move, but boating around to travel your world and maybe explore or sightsee a little bit, 
It's a genius idea. And it's pretty efficient, too. With the bed situation, check done and food. Nah, we got to start to it. We got a little bit of food. We're going to need to now cook this stuff up. To cook it up, it's time we go ahead and upgrade our tools a little bit and go back over to that coal that I cited a little bit earlier on. If I remember correctly, oh, oh beautiful, beautiful. A little bit of coal right down there. And is that iron too? Oh, but that's copper. So guys, as you know, if you've been following the videos lately, you know that I am so excited for 1.20. To be honest, 1.20 is my favorite update in a long time. Like maybe since the nether update. I I'm just in love with it. Speaking of the nether update, this is the very first Minecraft guide series that I have done since Minecraft 1.16. Yes, yes, that's right. The last guide that we did uh, ever was Minecraft 1.6, and that started it uh, like a million trillion years ago. No, 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 no. The skeleton that sees me. This is not good. No, 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 no. We can't deal with skeleton. Uh, no, no. You, you leave me alone. I need... <laughs> no, no. Pathetic. You're terrible. They're fine. Improvise, adapt, overcome. Improvise, adapt, overcome. I don't really need the coal. It's fine. I lied. What I could go ahead and do is get our hands on a little bit more stone here. And you just you watch. I'm an inventive guy. I, I figure it out. I would do something different. We cannot deal with skeletons with the health and food situation looking like that. With our very first wooden pickaxe here, we move down to our nearest body of stone and mine it until we have like, I would say about 24 or so. That'll keep us set for a little while. With 24 stone, we'll be able to not only upgrade our tools a little bit, but we'll also be able to make the second most useful block in the entire game. What do you guys think about this plot of land right here? I mean, look, it's really not much. We got a forest around us. We got the water right there, and we got the nice biome in the distance. I mean, I, I think it's simple. For now, what I will go ahead and do is clear out some of these trees, and we'll call this home sweet home. Or in other words, shelter. When you make a brand new Minecraft world, find a bed. And after that, go ahead and find a little bit of food. And then finally, it's time for shelter. I do not recommend exploring for too long inside of a world on day one. Pick somewhere that is kind of okay to live, like maybe not a desert in the middle of nowhere, and settle down. Ideally, we would have gone down into that cave and picked up a little bit of coal too, and to make that situation a little easier. But we do have an alternate option. If you can't find any coal early game, you can actually take the logs inside of a furnace and turn the logs into the coal. Or like the, the fake coal. Now this is not exactly going to be the most efficient way of doing things, but it will work. Early game, what we're looking for here is a campfire. If we're going to cook food, hands down. It's all campfire. Give it a little bit of time and our furnace has finished its job over here. We have a little bit of charcoal. Back over inside of the crafting table, if we tap this book on Minecraft Java, we get all of the recipes that we currently know in the game. You'll unlock recipes on Minecraft Java and Bedrock soon by basically just picking things up. The wonderful recipe that we're looking for right here, the golden ticket to success for this episode, is going to be a campfire. It's a little bit expensive, but it will be wonderful. Now we'll think long and hard about where we're going to put this campfire and then just slap it down on the ground right there. If we place the campfire down and then pick it back up, it actually breaks and we'll have to recraft it. So think about it. Anyways, I think I was trying to say something sentimental before that skeleton interrupted me a little while ago. I haven't done a Minecraft guide since 1.16, and since 1.16, there have been so many changes. Like, not only has the world gotten a ton deeper, but terrain has been beautified, armor is so much more wonderful, and there are so many new blocks as well. I really can't wait to check out all of this stuff, build farms for it all, and really just do everything over the course of this series together. Anyways, we give it a little bit of time, and just like that, the food is spit out of the campfire. With food successfully spit out of the campfire, we go ahead and eat it, and actually start getting our hunger back up. Now, play the game on hard difficulty, or even normal difficulty. And once your hunger gets a little bit lower, your health will stop refilling. We must manage it. And uh, to manage that situation, all we need to do is have a consistent supply of food. Later on, we will build a beautiful food farm. It will be glorious and wonderful. But for now, poor fish. Your sad fish. It will have to do. And so that's almost it. The very final thing that I think we need to get done to be in a good possession for today's episode is make us some stone tools and cook up that food. And to set up a couple goals, Minecraft to guide this brand new season. Over the course of this season, we will be progressing things quickly, but not too quickly. My goal here is to take out the Ender Dragon before episode number 25. After we do that, we go ahead and move on to bigger and better things. 
Hey, uh, it's me, Editals here. Just cutting in to say that today's episode is a little slower because it's like episode number one, you know, the great intro and everything like that. Even the next episode, we'll do more. I promise. Another goal that I've got for us here over the course of this world is to farm quite literally everything. I, I feel like I said this before, but hey, it just never happened for whatever reason. Going forward, my plan here is to make this the best guide series ever. To make that happen, we will combine the best guide season, season three, with the last main series, the survival. For me in this world, you can expect amazing tips and tricks, really cool farms, useful builds, but also a little bit of spicy lore as well. It's gonna be fun. On top of the other content I cook up, I'm gonna try and drop like two episodes of this series a week. Patrons get early access to the episodes, tap the link down below for more. And I, I have a lot of information, but I think finally here, the final thing i like to talk about today is today's comment of the day. That's right, that's right, you can hold the applause, but for this series, the comment of the day segment is back. However, for this episode, being episode one and all, I wasn't able to pick a comment from the previous episode. So, I went to Twitter gang. I got a lot of amazing comments and questions, but I think the best one that relates to this episode is going to be all about the world seed. How did I pick the seed and what do I know about it? Oh, it's a beautiful question, really, and perfectly fitting. Now, before I insert the clip of me answering the world seed and wrapping up the episode, I would like to do a tiny, tiny bit of exploring here because world seed, to be honest, I don't know very much about it. From the looks of things here, it looks like we have a beautiful forest right over here and a birch forest and a taiga. Right off the bat, we're going to have access to like one, two, three wood types. I, lo I love it. I can't wait to build inside of this world. Moving back into the forest, of course, over there we got Sky Tower. Oh, it's beautiful, gorgeous. Gonna have to shape something on that for sure. Over here we have a small little cave. That should hopefully get us started. If I can uh, clear up the trash inside of it. Hmm, and let's get at a horizon line over this way. It looks like we have more and more forest. Exploring is hands down easily. One of my favorite things to do in Minecraft and exploring episode with 1.20. Oh, you already know. We're gonna have to do that soon. I have so many hopes, dreams, and goals inside of this world, including hopefully eventually getting like every armor trim, maybe building some kind of wonderful museum or something like that. It looks like we got a lot of surface caverns over here too. That's going to be pretty cool. Well, those are some eggs. I'll take them. I guess the one downside about this seed is unless we have a taiga village over inside of the taiga, there's probably not going to be a village too close to world spawn here, but it's fine. I think I can make do. Oh, my, 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 walking back over to World's Bond here to roll the answer to that question. It looks like I found something else over there, too. <laughs> I didn't know about that. To find the World Seed that we'll be using for this new guide season, I did do a little bit of seed exploring, but not too much. When it came to criteria for our beautiful world, this basically came out of one thing. And that thing? Oh, it's gotta be that inspirational landscape. For our world, I didn't really care too much about structures or even how close things are to World Spawn. I just care if things actually exist in the world, and... Oh my gosh. <laughs> did I choose the wrong seed? Because this one is like... Well, this is gorgeous, too. Wow. I can't wait to find beautiful monsters like these in the guide. <laughs> it's gonna be great. For this new guide, World Seed, I know a tiny bit about it, but not like a lot. For example, I have no clue where the structures are, but I do kind of know what we have going on here at World Spawn, and I do know of another beautiful thing inside of this world. Inside of this series, my plan is to quite literally go over everything inside of Minecraft, including the menu, all these game rules, and everything like that, but I think what we're gonna do is save all of this type of stuff for a little bit later on. I got some ideas, some plans, but they keep it spicy for now. We'll talk about it later. And so, my friends, with 32 salmon cooked up inside of the inventory, and wooden tools, and stone tools, a beautiful red bed, the most iconic trio, and a tiny bit of shelter set up here at World Spawn, that's it for this episode. In the next episode, the plan is to progress this world a little bit farther and make it look even more beautiful. If you enjoyed this episode, let me know by tapping like, subscribe for more episodes, and thank you all so much for watching. You're the best. It's been me, Waddles, back inside of the Minecraft guide, and oh my gosh, it feels so good. I will see you all tomorrow. Goodbye. And today's comment of the day is apparently a popular one. I saw it so many times, but you want longer episodes. I'll give you longer episodes. How you doing, everybody? It's me, Waddles, and welcome back to the wonderful Minecraft guide. Today, I've got a banger of an episode in store for you. By the end of today's episode, we will no longer be considered legally homeless. This is going to be beautiful. Also, in honor of that new big update, we have to explore a little bit more. Let me know your dream episode link down below, and 
At dawn, we set out. <sighs> Guys, I, I said it like a million times the last episode, but I still can't get over how good it feels to be back inside of a Minecraft survival series and, and just in this new world in general. I'm so excited. So right near the end of the last episode, we did a tiny bit of exploring, and I like what I saw. I like a good forest, but I, I think there's more. Before you head out anywhere inside of a new world, remember that golden ticket, your red bed. Before you do any traveling, exploring inside of your world, it's always a good idea to bring that bed with you. Now, I'm not really too worried about losing location right here. We're right by World Swan. Shouldn't really be a problem, but, but don't forget to mark your location down too. And a wonderful exploring hack we talked about last episode, boats, boats, and boats. It's all about boats early game. We do have a little bit more food than we had last episode, but it's still not like the most food in the world. If we could mainly stick to the water today, I think that would be beautiful. And if we could mainly like not go too far away from spawn here today, that would be beautiful too. And, well, 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 I think coal is another beautiful, great thing to have. Skeleton, pathetic skeleton from last episode. Look, I know this isn't the first cave. This is it's definitely not, but this is my first coal. <laughs> it's beautiful. While exploring today, I would like to hopefully find, like, eight pieces of fire. I hope it's not asking for too much. So today, we explore only a little. There is one iconic landmark that I... That I kind of like legally have to walk over to today and check it out. That's gonna, of course, be Sky Tower with apparently lava flowing out of this thing. Oh, should we build over here? Like, I know it's a plains biome and it's not like the most inspiring landscape, but like, that's a literal Sky Tower. Imagine having that in the background. Hmm, sheep friend, beep friend, what do you think about this iconic landscape over here? And chicken, you like it too? You're so happy you could lay an egg here. Raise your child? <sighs> well, I, oh, you too, you too. Well, I think it's settled then. I think this is almost a little bit too beautiful to pass up. For now, I think we'll call this home. So I've never seen any of this landscape before. Look at this thing. We got this beautiful mountain range right over there. Of course, this one over there and that too. I'm thinking this hands down. It has to be a shattered savanna biome because that is... Well, I mean, it's shattered. Look at the floating islands up there. We literally had the aether inside of the sea. It's gorgeous. Also, we have this body of water right here. I mean, we were just in that one over there. I, I feel like this probably doesn't connect to the other one, but I mean, you never know. Maybe it goes out that way, wraps around, and connects over. If we could use rivers to just travel all around this world for a little while, well, I think that would be great. Iron, iron, iron. Before we settle down and get to building our brand new house, we're going to need a little bit of iron. Of course, I'm seeing more than enough iron up there, but that's going to be like way too difficult to reach. I think what might be a better bet here is move over this way, where I was seeing a lot of stone. Oh, you're perfect. You look so good. And this moment, unfortunately, brings us to the good riddance of old, trusty wooden pickaxe. Wooden pickaxe, your days are over. I feel like even the most beginner of beginner knows, but in Minecraft, we've got a little bit of tool progression going on here. All you can really get with this thing is cobblestone and a little coal. Make your wooden pickaxe, pick up a couple blocks of stone, and make the stone pickaxe. After you get the stone pickaxe, it's time for that sweet, sweet iron. It's time for that sweet, sweet iron. I feel scammed. I've taken advantage of and, and ripped off. This is a blatant, a blatant scam. Well, 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 well. What do we have here? Not only one, not only two, three, four, five, but also six pieces of iron right over here. And, oh, there's even more. Seven, eight. We got it. With these humble, yeah, gorgeous blocks of iron, we did it. We basically completed our travel goal for today. With this small chunk of iron right here, we're checked on. <laughs> In fact, way more than checked on. That means we can move on to settling down. Settling down inside of a Minecraft world. That's a whole big, oh my gosh. Hey. Wow. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, I had no clue about that one. You <laughs> keep that in mind. <laughs> we'll come back. We're too busy for today. Depending on how you like to play the game, your very first instinct when you create a new world is of course going to be settled down somewhere and built. If you're planning on settling down and building somewhere, you're going to want to find that inspirational landscape. But remember here, we're early game. It's probably not a great idea to explore for hours and hours and hours, running low on supplies, to find that dream landscape. 
For us in our world, I think our long-term goal is gonna have to be some gorgeous mountains and that pretty pink biome, but for now, we're just gonna find something that'll work. And find something that will work. A wonderful biome early game that is relatively safe to settle down in is a plains biome. And speaking of the plains biome, I mean, we have a gorgeous open one right here with this really cool sunset backdrop. I like it a lot, but I'm... I'm kind of having second guesses. Don't get me wrong, it's really nothing about Sky Tower. I like it, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful, but... We're also kind of a, a little bit farther from World Spawn than I really initially wanted. I... I think we're gonna find somewhere else. Early game in Minecraft, if you're looking for at least an okay place to live, or maybe even your dream location, one of the best things that you can do is find the tallest tree or hill in the area you're around, pause the game, go to video settings, and raise the boys up all the way. Now I have brand new computer for new series, so I could probably roll with 32 render distance here, but what we're doing here is upping the render distance so we can see as far as possible. Now up at a high vantage point, we can basically see everything around here. Maybe something will catch my eye, like I love this swamp bomb and I want to live there, so I could just like, you know, run over there, or sky tower, or plains biome, or maybe even beautiful forest biome. So humble, yet simple. Unfortunately, this is not Zelda Tears of Kingdom, the game that is eating up way too much of my time right now, so you can't really set a waypoint or anything, but once you find something that looks inspirational, fix your render distance, and head in that direction. Oh my gosh, I... I think I'm gonna cry, guys. I, I, I think I might have to do it. This is beautiful. Look at that tree right there. It's gorgeous, and it even comes with a crafting table, a furnace, and a, and a, and a, and a campfire, too. We might have to live here. <laughs> Location? Check. We're gonna build a house over here. Iron. Oh, my friend almost checked. We're gonna throw this iron in the furnace and go ahead and smelt it up. With the location of our future house pretty much picked out, it's time to talk about what we're going to actually build out of. We're going to want to keep it simple. Giant castles, strange statues, even beautiful towering lighthouses. They're all wonderful ideas for builds, but also, maybe they're not great ideas for builds early game. If you're just like me and you got that fresh world feel, you want to build a starter house, it's a much better idea to keep it simple and use the materials from the environment around you. As of the 1.20 update, Minecraft has blocks and blocks and blocks and blocks. It's really easy to dream of building with some really, really cool blocks, like maybe reinforced deep slate, sea lanterns, and cut red sandstone. But hey, not to break your dreams, you do what you want to do, but it might be a little bit tricky to actually gather all of the supplies to, to use this block palette. Block palette is a term you're going to want to get used to, because you're going to hear it a lot inside of the Minecraft building community. Just like smash the like of this video, block palette is a pretty simple concept. It's basically like the blocks you're gonna use on your build. If you're building your very first build today, I recommend keeping it simple. And maybe try and limit yourself to like, I don't know, five or so blocks maximum. Sure, the more blocks you add into your build, the more detailed it could get. But also the more messy it could get too. Since this is gonna be our starter house, I also recommend taking into account your starting surroundings. If you're inside of a desert, find five or so blocks somehow. If you're inside of like a bunch of forests, well, it's basically gonna be all wood types. You can just take a bunch of them. So taking our direct surroundings inside of our survival world into account here, I think our block palette that we're gonna go with is gonna consist of these blocks right here. We're gonna use a lot of wood because that's gonna be easy to get pretty quickly, and cobblestone, I mean, we can get that pretty quickly too. Gathering resources for our very first build. <laughs> it's been a little bit of time and our iron should be smelted up just about right now, but I don't really recommend using up your first iron on gathering resources. Look, I will admit it, that it will make your job a little bit longer here, but stone tools are pretty much like your gift, early game. I mean, it's early game here, we'll relax, we'll take it nice and slow. We'll go ahead and use stone tools and start gathering all of the materials for the build that we're going to do today. To break any Minecraft build down to its most basic components, essentially we've got three things going on here. We've got palette, we've got style, and we've got shape, or PSS for short. Hey, <laughs> I gotta be careful with that one. When gathering resources for your future beautiful build, I highly recommend gathering in stacks here. In other words, check this out. I got about a stack and a half of oak logs, about a stack and a half of spruce, and then a stack of birch logs here. 
a sack of cobble too. Instead of going off and gathering like seven logs and then coming has started your build, try and get more than enough supplies, if you can. And if that means shopping down an entire forest for your supplies, that's cool, that's cool. But we are also environmentalists around here. We will replant forests so we can chop it down later, or so it just looks beautiful in the future. When it comes to the style of your build, if you don't have a vision already, it's cool to look up inspiration. Look up a little starter house inspiration and you'll find things like this, like this, or like this pretty quickly. You want to figure out if you're trying to build like a medieval thing, if you're building a modern thing, or if you're building just like whatever the thing is. To figure out your style before you figure out your palette might help. If you're going to do like a castle, then you're going to need more stone than wood. And finally here today, last definitely not least, we're going to need to figure out the shape. We're going to keep things nice and basic, super simple for today's build. After all, this is a starter house. What I think I want to do here is set up a small starter cabin in the woods that's going to be basically like a, like a perfect square, I'm thinking. I think this area right in here in between the birch trees, the, the taiga trees, and then, of course, the normal beautiful forest, I think this is probably going to be like a really good spot for it, actually. Pretty scenic. Oh, also, look what I found. The game literally tried to unlife me <laughs> already. Look at this hole. I almost jumped right down into it. Would have landed straight in lava. That would have been terrible. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and cover that up. <laughs> I better not fall. And maybe no trees. Also, the fire, too. Also, while collecting cobblestone, well, well, we're a little bit more rich. Uh, we'd love to see it. All right, so we set up a small square on the ground with some markers here. But I think uh, right off the bat, I, I do think I want to move it back a little bit. I think if I maybe move it back, I can get away with having to build on this hill. If you've never built a build before in your life, build it on a flat spot. It'll make your life easier. So there we go. We moved the build back a couple blocks. Maybe this will save room for like a farm or something cool in the future. Let's do this. A square build. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to keep it relatively small. I've got a vision in my mind perfectly created for a starter house. This will hopefully be my most beautiful yet simple starter house I've ever built. To kick our build off today, I think we start with a couple uh, the logs, stick it up into the sky. Then it's over to our crafting friend here to make a ton, like, like a lot of staircases. And speaking of staircases, the iron in the furnace is finally done. We go ahead and pull all that off, get that sweet advancement, and then we can actually go back over to the furnace and put eight pieces of cobblestone inside of it. For building, what we're setting up back over there is going to be our golden ticket. Now this build here, I end my vision, my sweet dream here. I think it sits a little bit higher up off the ground and we kind of have this like staircase situation walking up to it. I think what I'm going to do to make this uh, fit into the landscape a little bit more is maybe source some dirt from over in the forest and kind of spill the land out a little bit more so we can just like walk right up to the build. That'll be cool. Now when it comes to building in Minecraft, there's definitely a lot to it, especially if you want to make like a world's most beautiful looking build or something like that. However, at the same time, one of the worst things you could do in the entire world here is hold yourself to standards that are, like, impeccably high. You see, today, friends, we're building a simple starter house. I want this thing to look nice, but it doesn't need to be the most beautiful, perfection piece of wonderfulness in the entire world. If it looks good, then we're good. One of the biggest tips that I have for any house, a starter house, old house, is give yourself multiple entrances to the thing. We're going to have a front door that I think is going to sit over there looking towards the river. And then 100%, we're going to set up an emergency back exit that'll walk off the back of the building right over here. Now, now when it comes to a starter house and a building house in general, instead of building it all out of one single block, try and mix in different blocks. That's where this block pallet stuff is going to come into play here. For our block pallet today, remember, we're using like five blocks or so. For our build today, we're setting up a square house, but to spice it up a little bit, we're going to actually cut out one of the corners. So it's going to be a square that turns into an L. I'm thinking over here on this part of the build, we won't really see anything, which means we could be a little bit more efficient with our resources here and actually just use slabs. Then I think I want the front door of the build to be right there. On the inside of the build, I'm thinking about doing a different type of floor that I'm doing on the outside. But for our build today, we'll worry about the outside first. So, now worrying about the outside, I don't know about you, but I feel like the ultimate, you know, like 100% early starter game, a Minecraft house vibe. To capture that vibe immaculately, we're going to need oak logs. We're going to need a little bit of oak plank situation going on here. And 100%, we're going to need a little bit of cobblestone too. This is like the iconic trio of Minecraft starter houses. Building. It's going to be a main focus, a major part of the series. We're going to do a lot of talk about building, how to make your builds more advanced, how to make them more beautiful, all the tips and tricks, you know, every single piece of it. For today, all we're really going to worry about here is using multiple different blocks on a build and try to break up sections. Meaning, if possible, don't have like a giant 7x7 flat area that is all one block. 
If you're going to have an area that is a little bit more flat, like say this wall right here, use different blocks. By putting different blocks on the wall here, like oak and cobblestone and a log, it'll naturally make it look a little bit better, even if it is still flat. So, so far, taking a look at our build here, friends, it doesn't really look like too much, but we won't judge it too soon. We give it a chance to live. Once we come back in here and put different details on this thing like that, it's going to make it come to life a whole lot more and look even better. I'm pretty happy with where the build is going, so at this point in the build today, it's time to put the roof on this thing and basically, like, finish it up. The roofs of a Minecraft build, oh boy, <laughs> for the longest time, it was, like, my least favorite part of the build. I think nowadays, maybe I like it a little bit more than I used to, but still, they're a little bit more tricky than the rest of the build. For a very basic, yet effective, and nice-looking roof on your build, try creating an outline. For the roof of your build, pick, say, two different types of blocks. One of those blocks is going to be the outline block for your roof. To start by placing a staircase or something that is going to be one of the blocks of your roof off of the side of your build. Create an overhang to make it look a whole lot better. Staying pretty consistent with the staircases here, go ahead and follow the outline, the shape of your build from one side all the way to the other side. Once you get to the peak parts of your roof, start going up a little bit. Maybe do something a little bit fancy hanging off the build if you want. But yeah, basically just make an outline. After you fully finished and filled out the outline of the roof of your build, it's time for the middle. Middle of the roof, middle of the roof. Oh, we're so simple. Using even more staircases or just a second block in general, fill it all in. That's all you have to do. Now, a very, very important thing that we need to do here before we finish up the outside roof of the build is go to the inside and place some torches. Theoretically, if on the inside of the build, we completely forgot the torches, we could walk away from the build after finishing the roof, come back, and there's just creepers loaded up inside of this boy. That is definitely not the vibe, so <laughs> uh, don't forget the light. It's very important. Back up here on the top of the build to finish this thing off for good. All we need is a... Is what? One more slab. <laughs> We're literally one slab short, but I think it's looking pretty good. So here it is. Went back over to the spot. Got one vinyl slab, and it's done. The starter house. Oh, please, please. Only applause. Really, really. It's not much. It's very simple. But yes, it's a starter house. Aside from details on this thing, we're done. But uh, yeah, details. Aside from the details that we need to slap on this thing. Details, details. On any build, good or bad, the thing that will truly make your build come to life here is going to be the final touches. Now, final touches, details, oh, it's a huge part of every Minecraft build. Long story short, try and use blocks that look a little bit more interesting and break up your palette a little bit. Maybe leaves. Those are a really, really nice decorational looking block. Maybe fences. Fences are pretty clean and they're so advanced looking. Maybe come back over to your build and drop that roof down a little bit like that. You know, make it look a little bit more cool. If you haven't already, another really interesting looking block is going to be staircases. When it comes to detailing builds and making them come to life, there's a whole lot to it. Long story short here, the part of any build that really brings it to life is going to be the details. There's a whole lot to detailing builds. When it comes to detailing builds, it's a topic that we're going to talk a whole lot more about in future episodes. To finish off our build today, this is where the iron comes in. It's time for our first pair of shears. We need leaves. Earlier on from hunting salmon in the river, I got a little bit of bone meal. I can use the bone meal on these two tall flowers to get even more two tall flowers. Then I can put them around the build too. You will just say, hey, throw some leaves right there. Slap a couple signs on this simple window planter box. One more for beautiful measure right there. A couple random flowers strategically placed surrounding this build. A door, door two. Oh, for sure, we're gonna need those. A tiny bit of flowers out front, why not? Oh, wait, you know what? I completely forgot about the stone. Whoops. Oh, well, I guess we didn't need it anyways today. Anyways, here, with a couple more final touches around the build to make it look a little bit nicer, and maybe a couple glass panes inside of the windows, today, I think that's it. If you have a vision and you keep it simple, using only a handful of blocks, it's not too hard to create a beautifully perfect-looking starter house. And that's where we're going to end it today. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. What do you think about the house? Patron gang, big shout out. Archangel, Ground Crazy May, Medical Boomstick, Swoopy Loopers, Noodle Pork, and Bill W. You are all the best. For early access to the episodes, check out my Patreon, like, subscribe, and to next time, we'll be rich. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone.
Good morning, everybody. It's me, Waddles, and welcome back to the guide. Today, friends, ooh, I got another banger of an episode in store for you. Today is the day we embark on our very first mining journey and talk what you might have been doing wrong the whole time. We'll organize, we'll talk world seed, and a little bit more too. Now, before we embark on our very first ultimate journey today, there are a couple things we need to get done over here at, at home sweet home. Today, I want to try something a little bit different for this series. We got a like goal. That like goal is a mere 7,000 likes for good luck. With the help of you, my friend, we will smash, annihilate, decimate that goal. So thank you in advance. Truly wouldn't have been able to do it without you. And thank you for all your feedback on episode lengths in the last episode. Now, thing number two. Uh, speaking of the last episode, we built this humble little starter cabin. I'm kind of in love with it. Uh, but if we move inside and it's pretty plain, dusty, and a little bit boring. Hey. Not dusty, not dusty. I keep it clean. Don't worry. Inside of the house is empty. Even worse, inside of the inventory. Oh, <laughs> inside of the inventory, it's cluttered. It's messy. How do you expect me to become pure profit king? Looking like this. Humble crafting trio, great one. I come to you with a tribute. The tribute, a simple, a single birch door. You see, we need to progress this world. Then in the pursuit of progression, you can have that door. You keep it forever because this chest, well, this chest is mine. It's a very sentimental one. The first chest of the world. And the ultimate tip of early game, I'm not... <sighs> I wanted to place it down and never break it. I, I don't think that's going to work. Here's a clip of me placing the chest down for the very first time inside of my Minecraft world. For the ultimate early game trick, a basic piece of advice here, make a chest and place it down. Otherwise, your inventory is going to go crazy. But depending on your financial situation, if you're a little bit better off, and maybe don't make just one chest, but instead make two chests or even, yes, yes, even, make three Minecraft chests. And perfect timing, would you look at that? Here we have another day gone, which means red bed, my friend. We don't need to have you under the stars. It's true that under the stars, a red bed is a little bit more romantic, but it's also true that I haven't found a love interest in this series yet, so we put it inside of the house. Three is the golden number. For now, we begin this world with three simple chests. This chest is going to be like the sentimental chest with like very special pickaxe, maybe sentimental sword, you know, things like that. This chest is going to be the building chest with this door that I found on the ground. Then over here, we're going to go ahead and do like, I, I guess like plant things and maybe like food things and also maybe like mob drops as well. With the inventory in tip top shape like this, I, I think we can embark. Our first Minecraft mining expedition. Let's do this. In the modern era of Minecraft, if you know where to look, early game mining is like the easiest thing you can do. 100% safe too. You see, ever since the stunning part two of the Caves and Cliffs update, Minecraft worlds got a whole lot deeper, but also at the same time, they got a whole lot taller. Look, I hate to break it to you, but nowadays, if a single soul tells you to go find a cave, your nearest one and go into it and mine the iron inside of that, they're lying to you. They're, they're trying to get you taken from this world and probably take your iron in the process. It's 2023, baby, and we're Minecraft gods, which means we need to find one of three different locations. Now, location number one, conveniently enough, I've actually already found it. Look at that beautiful thing over there, Sky Tower. We know exactly where we could head if we wanted to. Because I'm an empathic, considerate king, I'm going to give you a couple different locations you can do your first mining at inside of your world. Location number one, depending on your seed, is a shattered savanna biome. The shattered savanna biome is absolutely insane. Very inspiring to build an early game. And I mean, look at that thing. All over this thing. We got iron, 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 and a little bit of coal too. Because of where ore actually generates nowadays, and because these biomes are like all stone exposed, it's going to be so easy to mine here. And uh, I, I manifested this. I, I did this to us, and I'm sorry. The very first rain shower of the world. I was just thinking before the episode, I swear. Why hasn't it rained inside of this world quite yet? And, well, here it is. It's raining now. And I don't even have a bed. While we set out on our expedition today in search of other lands, I like to set a couple goals. In episode one, we were looking for something desperately, and I just couldn't find it anywhere. I would like to today... I would like to today find that thing. Oh my gosh, you're telling me it's been sitting right here the whole time? I was scouring that whole forest, and, and you've just literally been sitting right here smiling at me, waiting for me, like right down the, the river from home. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. What is that? It's just too easy for me. I had to check the difficulty. Wow, maybe I'm just that good. Sweet berries. 
<laughs> That's amazing. Well, I was going to say I was looking for sweet berries in episode one, couldn't find them, but uh, considering they're so close to home, I'll just come back for them. I'll remember this. Continuing back on our small expedition-y food hunting time lapse here, I like to talk about something we talked about in episode one. No offense, but you guys need to step it up. In episode number one, I kicked off a game between me and you. You gotta guess the world seat. Right now, I'm winning. Nobody's guessed. In honor of helping you guys out a little bit, I'll give you one more hint. The world seat is a four-letter word that begins with the letter D. That's right, that's right. I said a four-letter word that begins with the letter D. If I see the correct scene, I will reveal it next episode. So here we are, continuing our expedition a little bit farther than the river. It looks like I found a tiger biome and I found a forest biome. It's pretty cool. To be honest, I have no clue where I'm headed, but I did find a little bit of copper. We haven't picked any copper up quite yet. We don't really need any. But I mean, I'll take it. Why not? Early game of Minecraft, when you're looking for any ores, of course, if you find large patches of stone that are relatively safe looking like this right here, it's a great idea to stop and look. But more specifically, we're looking for some biomes. A shattered savanna biome is beautiful. If you have a world seed that spawns you right next to an ocean, another option would be a stony shore biome. Cutting over to a random world, then inside of that place, a random stony shore biome. Look at this thing. It's covered in ore. Everything you need is right here. And stone too. A stony shore biome is absolutely clutch, but there is one more place that we could find that would be a little bit more clutch. Now our timing right here is kind of impeccable. Right here is where we halt our journey and make brand new bed number two, drop it down, and roll it back over today. So continuing our journey right here, it looks like I'm starting to stumble on something potentially well. Well, potentially here's something absolutely amazing. If I know my Minecraft terrain, it kind of is like a little bit sensical nowadays. We got flat, low area, and then slowly things start to get a little bit more hilly. When they start to get a little bit more hilly, if you're really lucky, they will get hilly and stay like hilly. Really, really hilly. Hey, 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 hold up a minute, hold up just one minute. Should we try our luck? Ah, I, I feel like we should try our luck. It seems, my friends, that we have stumbled on our first random structure, a story from the past. And inside of the story from the past, if we're very, very lucky here, please be lucky, we have a map, okay, and, and the paper, okay. You gotta be careful here, we cannot drown, absolutely not, but okay. Well, maybe, inside of chest number two that I saw. Ooh, I see you in there. <laughs> Hold on, friend, I'm coming for you. I'm coming right for you after I get a little bit more H2O. We get a little bit more air, we go back under the ground, it's happening. Armor trim is right here. Armor trim? <laughs> I hate it, I'm miserable, you've ruined my day. Armor trim, we had our very first option to get sweet armor trim, and this is what you give me, you give me tons of iron. It's beautiful, with our goal of two stacks of iron today. Hey, yeah, 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 I didn't say it, but by the end of the episode, we have a goal of two stacks of iron, and coal too. It will help us on our goal, but there's a reason sad violin music is playing, and that's because we could have found a trim. We lost it all. Anyways. Anyways, here, carry on with our expedition into the unknown today. It looks like I found a stony shore bio. We go ahead and put my tips to the test right away. I saw coal over there. There's copper right there. More copper right there. We move around a little bit more coal. Oh, it's beautiful. We had flint over there. We have even more coal. Yeah, uh, you, you see what I'm talking about. I'm not really seeing any iron over here quite yet, but uh, yeah, you get the point. You see what I'm talking about. It's pure profit, all day long. And so, my friends, after just a tiny bit of mining, we now are at level 10 and even better. <laughs> We're over halfway to our cold goal for the episode. 64 and 90 more. Oh, it's beautiful. We didn't even reach the target place yet. Oh yeah, the copper. I ah, early game mining. If you want the copper, maybe for a build or a spyglass, something like that, go ahead and take it. But for now, today, I personally am going to pass it up. I don't really need it yet. So back at our expedition here. Originally, I was trying to travel all just inside of the water here. Try and like, you know, conserve the food, conserve the hunger and everything. But things are starting to look a little bit more hilly over here. And to find our true target biome for today, I think we're going to probably need to follow the hills. Usually, nowadays, Minecraft terrain kind of hints at what's next. If you find a savanna, it could lead to a desert. If you find a hill, you never know. It could maybe lead to a mountain, which is, I guess this is kind of a mountain. It's a meadow biome. Ah, that's cool. 
All right, side note, we're going to definitely talk more about exploration a little bit later on, but look at this view right here. This is like the most peaceful view in the game. We got a big mountain over there, a small forest, the birch forest, a little disgusting, the dark oak forest, new wood type right there, and then the taiga over there. Like, this is just so serene. It's so beautiful. It's so simple. It almost makes me want to make a base over here, but absolutely not making a base in the meadow long term. No, 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 no way. Anyways, I, I think our next goal is going to be over that way. It looks like the mountains and the hills continue. And speaking of mountains, and speaking of mountains, beautifully amazing tall mountains. Do you see what I see over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll get a vantage point. Do you see what I'm seeing right over there? Oh, <laughs> beautiful. The tallest mountain in the entire land. Look at how tall that thing is. That, my friends, is exactly what we're looking for for, for today. Inside of Minecraft 1.20, mountains are great for not one, but two reasons. Reason number one, the iron. We're gonna find so much iron here, I guarantee it. Especially if we can hit like a small cave up at the top of the mountain, or just a big patch of stone like I'm seeing right over there. That's gonna be great. Reason number two, we're gonna have to get a little bit lucky here. Luckier than we are right now. And oh, 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 wow. If I'm looking for diamonds, I know where to come back to later. Oh, look at that thing. That thing looks deep. I feel like I can see deep slate down there. Oh, boy. That's a, that's a cave. That's a deep cave. No, no, no. Hold up, hold up, hold up. The mountain is very, very exciting. But before we move on to the mountain, it might be a smart idea to look around this forest for a couple cows. We're going to need something before we venture into the mountain. Before we head up into that mountain and get ourselves into a potentially unfortunate situation, a bad circumstance, we're going to try and take out a cow or two or three or four and hopefully find ourselves a little bit of leather. We're actually going to... Ah, dang it, come on, you failed me. No. Believe it or not, I, I actually kind of can't believe I'm saying this here, but the very first piece of armor we're going to craft in this world it's gonna be a pair of old trusty leather boots. Early game Minecraft, to find iron for your first set of iron tools, first iron armor, everything like that, you're gonna wanna go up to a mountain. By far, these tall mountains are gonna be one of the best spots to find iron in the entire game. However, you need to watch out for powder snow. I'm not really seeing any over here, but if I was, I could walk on it and sink. Unless I have leather boots on. If I have leather boots on that match those clean pair of pants, then I won't sink. Mountain, mountain, mountain. Right off the bat, what do we see? The very first thing at the top of the mountain. No, no, uh, not a single bit of powder snow. No, uh, well, actually, maybe powder snow down there. But iron, right off the bat, it proves my point. If you're looking for iron early game, look at this chart right here. This chart is undeniably 100% factual. This is the chart of ore generation inside of Minecraft 1.18 and up, including 1.20. Ores, nowadays, they generate it in different spots that they used to. If you're just now coming back to Minecraft after years, the best spot to find iron, also the better spots to find coal, it's also going to be higher up. For both iron and coal, it's actually way easier to go up into a mountain for this stuff than it is to try and go into a cave and watch out for skeletons and creepers. Now, my one small patch of iron is depleted over there, so we will... Uh, <laughs> I almost fell. <laughs> <laughs> the one, the one, the one thing I got to give you is, yeah, you, oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. I, I, I broke it. I broke. Oh my gosh, I, I'm crying. Maybe I could be crying perhaps and possibly, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's not iron. It's not two stacks of iron. Uh, we'll find more though. <laughs> Instead, it's cherry. As the somber yet hopeful piano music echoes throughout the valley here, we need to watch out for big caves. The one thing about mining in a mountain here is you can find some pretty big drop-offs, but oh, oh my gosh, the cherry. I hear it calling my name. It needs me. I have to save it. I never got around to saying it. I was too busy talking about other things, but one of the other things I wanted to look for today, the sweet berries and cherries. It was going to rhyme. I was going to do a whole little bit. It was going to be great, but... Uh, they didn't even give me the opportunity to say that. I'm mad at you. Oh, cherry wood, sweet cherry wood, I'm mad at you. I'm livid. I'm so disgusted with you. I can't stand you at all. No, no, I can't. I can't. For that, I had to take the whole tree down. I'm sorry. And for that, I have to let the leaves decay, too. And and for that, I also need to pick up the pink petals. It's revenge all over the place. I, I'm not that guy, really, really. I'm not. But maybe I am. If you get me mad enough, I'm that guy. Add Moonrise romantically inside of the most romantic biome, I think it's decided. 
Episode number three. Oh, my God. <laughs> episode number three is the best episode of the series so far. Oh, it's great. And you know what? Actually, check this view out right here. We got this big mountain in the background, like forest all over right here. Could clear this out, build like a base in the bowl right there. And then you have like more mountains in the background. Cherry too. Maybe this is potential base location. What do you think? I mean, look, we'll keep it in mind for a little bit later on. We'll come back to it maybe for sure. But wow, what a find. And cherry sapling, I got you too. Now, cherry sapling tree drop rate is actually, like, pretty good. I don't think we need, like, sacks and sacks, but if I could have, like, maybe... No, yeah, I, I think, like, five. If I could leave this area with, like, five cherry saplings, I would be comfortable. I feel like I could regrow them back at home, and if not, I mean, I guess it wasn't that far. I could always come back. And just like that, never mind. Six saplings? Yeah, this is easy. Seven, eight. <laughs> they dropped so many saplings. That's great. With a ton of cherry saplings in hand, it was now back over to the mountains for me. You see, we have a goal of a whole lot of iron, and right now, I've got some iron. I need a lot more. With the secret of the most iron generating high up in a mountain exposed fully to you, my plan is to now hunker down a little bit, walk around, and find as much iron as I can. Hopefully, I'm able to pull about two stacks of iron off of this mountain. When it comes to coal, I'm uh, looking pretty good right now, but technically speaking, I do need a little bit more coal too. So... Without further ado, it's time for that sweet sound. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Beautiful time lapse. Yes, beautiful. But, uh, well, 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 look at that. A little bit of emerald high up, too. I wish I had silk touch, but I, I just don't. Mm, I hate to leave it here for now, but... I think I'm gonna have to leave it here for now. <laughs> ah. Hey, hold up, hold up. One more time. Look at this. The powder snow. Exactly what I was talking about. With these leather boots on it, I glide right across it. And I get an advancement too. Oh, it's clean. No one mining in a mountain. If you find a big cavern like this, you go into it if you want, but you gotta be careful. The bigger caverns, they might cut all the way down to the deep part of the world, but they also are more likely to have mobs inside of them. So, hey, dripstone, too. Ah, so anyways, so be careful. Alright, so time jump. A little bit of time later, and I'm off of the mountain. I'm slowly starting to make my way back towards what I think is home. On the first mountain, I got a little bit of iron. On the second mountain, admittedly, I had a harder time finding iron. You see, you see, there is one more thing that I kind of skipped over. And that is, unfortunately, if you're doing the mountain method for mining early game, I ideally, you want to find the Stony Peaks Mountain. Or, in other words, the mountain that is, like, by the savannah, usually. You see, depending on how big and tall your Stony Peaks mountain is, this biome goes hard here. Because it's all stone, there's going to be even more ore generated. All exposed to the surface. It's actually pretty crazy. But look, I'm no quitter. We don't give up quite yet here. I got a Stony Peaks biome. I'm going to check this place, and we will find at least a little bit more iron. For the coal here, I've gone above and beyond. Way over two stacks. For the iron, including the stuff that we found on the shipwreck, we have almost a stack here. It's not two stacks, but if I could head back home with one stack, I'll at least be happy. And so with that final smaller time lapse done and dusted, we've just about finished the job today. If you're looking to do a little bit of mining early game and make it way easier, before heading into the caves, head up high to the mountains. Who knows? And looking for a mountain, you might find the most beautiful spot for your base, but also you're going to get ore pretty easy. The biomes that you should be looking for are Stony Shore, Shattered Savannah, or a mountain biome. Or, zaboom, for short. Good luck. And so, just like that, back at home sweet home, nice and safe, we got 50 iron plus the 10 iron right there, carry the invisible 4 that definitely exists, and we did it! 64 iron, and oh, so much gold too. 
In fact, I think we did so exceedingly well that it, it's already time for another brand new chest. We got building supplies right over there. But oh boy, right next to building supplies, we got something we're going to fill out even more very, very soon. We got iron. We got coal. And we even got a little bit of beautiful emerald stew. We got this really cool buried treasure map we'll talk more about later. And this bottle of enchanting too. I can't even begin to tell you how happy I am that I've already found the cherry biome. We can actually start using the new 1.20 things. Like, these flowers are so amazing. 100%, you're going to see more of those. And absolutely, you're going to see even more cherry wood stuff too soon. Oh, this is great. We'll plant this sugar cane a little bit more. And now let's take a look at the comments of the day. Waddles during tour of last guide. I love the starter house. It's a little too small. Waddles in this guide. Make smaller house. Yes, so that's actually kind of a really funny point here. Of course, I've only realized our little humble house here is probably the most humble starter house I've ever built, but I kind of wanted to set the vibe nice and nice and simple. Like what I'm thinking here with this smaller build is anytime we want to expand a little bit, like maybe more storage or maybe smeltery or maybe enchanting, we might have to like fill this area out a little bit more with some more buildings, which I think will be really cool to see. Also, I was really trying to get that early game Minecraft vibe with this house, and I don't know. I, at least me, I picture early game Minecraft. Maybe I'm biased, but like this is basically what I picture here. Final side note of the day, I guarantee you, if we went that way, we would have had all of our iron even more. <laughs> Anyways, like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. The patrons get early access to the episodes. Check the link down below. And next up, check out this one. It's been me, Waddles, and this has been great. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone. Welcome back to the guide, everybody. Top of the morning, top of the morning, top of the morning, top of the morning, top of the morning. <clears throat> Today, friends, we are really going to get down to it. By the end of today's first farming episode, we're going to have a beautiful, a magnificent farm. We're going to talk the basics to farming, a little bit about making them bigger, and the secretly overpowered food. Ah, <sighs> sun is shining, things are beaming, the weather is clear today. Oh, this, this is going to be a great episode. Now, before we crack down to it today, two things. I saw a couple questions about what day it is now. It's currently day 16. And thing number two, oh boy, I went ahead and made a luxurious upgrade to the house here. You go ahead and walk in, close the door, slowly turn. Everything looks the same so far. It's the same, it's the same, it's the same. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, that's romantic. It's on fire and that's a clean counter. <laughs> oh, that's gorgeous. That's very wonderful. Shower me with compliments on that down below. Best common wins. Today's like goal is going to be 7,000 again. <laughs> let's do it, friends. All right, so let's get a little bit uh, nostalgic for a minute here. Last episode, the great, wonderful exploring episode. When we went out and found that beautiful mountain, when we went out and made those leather boots, when we went out and found that iron, so much iron, a full stack, actually. I also stumbled upon this. Ah, <sighs> berries, berries, berries. Minecraft is a game about mining, it's a game about crafting, but also for me, it's definitely a game about farming. Today, my friends, we're going to build not only the biggest farm you've ever seen in your whole life, yeah, yeah, that's right, biggest farm ever, but also, we're gonna upgrade the food situation big time, all thanks to these bushes right over here. All I need to do is <laughs> not do that, and to collect every single berry here. The more we can start with, the better this is gonna make it. If you're newer to Minecraft, well, I got great news for you. Farming, it's a gigantic part of this game. From plants to mobs to items, there are so many different things inside of Minecraft. And even better, almost all of those things can be farmed in some way. Just like mining and crafting, farming is a major sector of this game's community. If you like the idea of farming, you're on the right channel. Not gonna lie, I know it was hardly in the series at all, but I kind of can't believe we haven't picked up a single seed to this point, I'm pretty sure, and definitely, absolutely haven't built a single farm. Our very first farm in this world, technically speaking, is going to be this little spot right here. That berry, that berry, that berry, that berry, and... That... Those berries, right there. Those. For the entire duration of today's episode, the plan is pretty simple. We will stand right here with this dramatic camera, like cinematic thing, and watch these berries grow up. Believe it or not, sweet berries are one of the easiest things to farm in Minecraft. Oh, <laughs> look, it did it, it did it. Now to maybe make our process a little bit quicker today, or kill time while I'm waiting here, we'll swim around in the river and try our luck at Sweet Sweet Sand. What is this, an imposter? What are you doing inside of my river? No, 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 no. We have to take you out. Wait, you know what? I think this is actually going to be the... 
This might actually be the... <laughs> I finally did it. I finally did it. After all this time. Yeah, that's all thanks to this wonderful beauty we got in episode one. Is what I was telling you about. You avoid the bad guys until you don't want to. And just like that, after looking at that bed for a second, the farm is already ready to go. Look at this thing. This is so easy. Now, unfortunately, not every farm in Minecraft is that easy. But for today, we don't really need to worry about that. So technically speaking, just like that, me and you together, we've built our very first farm inside of this world. To farm sweet berries, essentially, all you need to do is place them down on the ground, give them time, let them grow up, and then harvest them. That's it. That's literally all there is to it. That's why I love these things, and they're so easy to farm early game. But if we left that farm so small, productivity would be pretty low, um, or maybe not, maybe it wouldn't be, but it would definitely be hard to take advantage of these things and use them for their other great uses too. So, we need to expand, my friends. Hey, yo, 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 hold up, hold up, really quick, now that we have a little bit of a fancier wood type, I would like a doormat here, a little build hack while the salmon cooks up for us, throw this in the crafting table, go like that, you get pressure plates, take the pressure plate, drop it in front of the door, and it's an automatic door. At least when you walk inside or outside, it'll close always. Like, check this out. Oh, it's so much easier. I don't need to stop and close the door. It, it just works. It does it for me. So different items in Minecraft have different requirements to be farmed. We'll talk about those requirements as we start to farm everything. And for example, sugar cane. It's going to need a block that it can be planted on, and it's going to need water to be farmed. Sweet berry. All we really need is a block. And I think maybe, like, technically speaking, a little bit of light. It can't be in complete darkness, but but that's easy. We just won't build it in a dark room. Now, uh, thinking of gigantic, wonderful, world record sweet berry farm, I think I already found the perfect piece of land. Starter house is right over there. I would like to make this farm nice and close to the starter house, and I would also like to make this farm pretty big. To make it pretty big, it needs to be on a plot of land that'll be relatively easy to work with. And speaking of that, look at this area right over here. This area of land in between what we'll call Starter Cave and I guess Sky Needle over here is pretty flat. Like walking around on this layer right here, if I wanted to turn this into a big farm, I think all I would need to do, other than take out all the trees, is dig out a couple tiny hills one block tall. That is like literally the easiest thing in the world. And so my berries over here are going crazy. And so back over at the rightful odor of this world, we need our very first shovel of the world. And so without further delay, it's time we go ahead and get ourselves to a little work. Let's do this. Hey, 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 hold up, hold up. Look at this, right here. Here it is. The first seat. Maybe. And so, just a tiny bit of time, a little bit of hard work, sweating, tears later, I've just about done it. This whole area is basically done, other than this puny little hill in the middle. See, I think this project is going to set us up for success long term. One of the really, really nice things about taking on this uh, relatively large project so early on is going to be all of the resources that we've gotten. Look at this. Take a seat first because the shocking amount of wood is out of his inventory and also a lot of dirt too. If we got a terraform, make a new hill, make a new like island in the middle of the river there. Oh, it's, it's not a problem. I'm the guy. You go ahead and call me up. For our starter plot of land here today, I think something like this is going to look pretty good. I went ahead and left two beautifully giant tall trees in here, but everything else is gone and it's flat. Heading back over to home sweet home here, I can guarantee it, because this farm has been loaded in, which is something we'll talk about in a minute, oh look at it, yes, because it's been loaded in, this farm is basically fully ready to go. All of this has shown me is, oh man, this new farm is going to be amazing for berries. And with that, the perfect segue, speaking of amazing, I personally will call the starter house pretty amazing, but uh, that's beside the point. The actual point here is, the starter humble cabin, it needs a name. I left a spot on the sign right here in this line for some kind of name, and that's your job. Down below here in the comments, I am looking for simply the best, most fitting name ever for the starter house. It could be a name, it could just be a word, it could even be your favorite type of vegetable, I don't care. Give me a good name down in the comments below. The sweet berries are one of the best things to farm early game because, well, because there's almost nothing to it. All we really need is a flat open piece of land to set up a farm for this stuff. 
Now, uh, what I want to think I want to do here is try and find the approximate middle. Uh, I'm going to guess that maybe the middle of this area is, like, approximately right there. That feels like it would be kind of right. Like, eh, it kind of looks like the middle, right? Of this. Eh, yeah, maybe. To set the tone, get the vibe right for the middle of this farm, what I think I want to do here, design-wise, is put a crafting table on the ground. Then we can go ahead and take our shovel and use the shovel on the ground to create path blocks. What I want to do with this farm is make a gigantic square of a sweet berry farm. For this farm, to make sure it's up and running perfectly, I lied. There's not just one requirement. There's kind of like two requirements. Not only are we going to need somewhere to actually plant the sweet berries and the berries themselves, but we're also going to need this farm to be loaded in. Farm loading and in relation unloading is kind of a relatively complex Minecraft mechanic. We'll use my tutorial world here because it's got a lot of farms. You see that farm over there with the villagers inside of it? If I were to move far enough away from that farm, the villagers would lock up. They'd freeze. Now all of that farm magic on Java Edition is basically controlled by one toggle. Simulation distance right here. In simple terms, the higher this toggle is, the farther I can be away from my farm for it to actually work. But the lower I put this toggle, the better the performance will be. So if you're lagging, you will go to like 5. By default, I think the setting is going to be like 12 nowadays. 12, it means I can go up to 12 chunks away from this thing, and it will still be loaded in. Which means it can run. The food can grow, the villagers can move, the golems can, can apparently spawn. <laughs> Even though they're definitely not meant to there. Back inside of our world here, all of that means that we want to build this farm somewhere relatively close to where we will usually be. If we're close enough to wherever we decide to plant these sweet berries, they'll stay loaded in. And if they stay loaded in, they'll be able to grow up, then we can harvest them and continue the cycle forever. The perfect example for everything that I'm talking about right now is actually back over at the starter house. We're a little bit of a ways away from the starter house, but definitely not like 12 chunks away. Oh yeah, yeah, by the way, a chunk is a 16 by 16 block area. Oh man, we got a lot to catch up on. <laughs> Anyways, because I wasn't too far away from this farm, as you can see over here, it's already grown a couple more berries. Back over at our farm, look at this stuff, it's going so well. And now me, my friends, I am a man of large scale dreams. I would like this farm to be as big as possible. The bigger we build this farm, the more berries I can harvest from this farm. The more berries I can harvest from this farm, well, the more berries that I will have from this farm. And oh my gosh, beautiful. The very first berry grows right in the middle here too. Ooh, it's so great. That sweet berry, sweet, ooh, sweet berry. That may be a problem with this farm, but I don't care. You see, sweet berries are so easy to farm, but they can also be a little bit dangerous if you're not careful. When a sweet berry bush is growing up, you can move into it. You just like slow down a little bit. However, once it's fully grown up, berries on the bush or not, if you move into it, it's a little bit thorny and spiky. It'll deal a tiny bit of damage and actually take away the durability on your armor. I gotta lose those. Now, one of the easiest ways to get around this whole damage thing is being careful. One of the other easiest ways is by putting a block on top of it or a slab or literally anything. With a block right there, I actually can't walk on top of it. It's perfect. It's very perfect. However, for today's farm, we're going to go ahead and keep it simple. We'll just be careful. Now, I, aesthetics, aesthetics, aesthetics. We got a little bit of sweet berries planted in here, but we also have cherries. Last episode, we found berries. Last episode, we found cherries. That's right, it's time. The very first cherry wood build of the entire world. What I think I want to do is uh, build with cherry logs. They look so nice. And then maybe I could come in here and, and strip these logs. I think I like that pink tone a little bit more. Then, I think what I want to do is come in and pull like, maybe like a million and a half fences in between all of this and make like a fancy garden thing in the middle. Now, in order to make this build feel nice and grand here today, what I think we want to do is add some height to it. I think maybe five blocks tall would be pretty good. Then, essentially, all I need to do is come in here with fences and connect everything. Sure, sure, it will be a little bit expensive and absolutely going to need to farm more cherry trees, but that's no big deal. See, I think, personally, by loading this thing up with a ton of fences just all over him, this is going to make it look really, really simple, but also, like, kind of fire and romantic and maybe even a little bit beautiful in the middle, too. I could even do, like, a cool swoop down. Ooh. Hey, but hold up, hold up. New farm design just dropped. So with this berry farm here, we need to leave rows in between each plant so I can walk in here and carefully harvest everything. I've already been finding that these rows are a little bit thin. To make it easier on me so I can like turn in here and continue to reach all the berries and get through, we'll leave a nice wide curve. It'll make a circular design and I think it'll look pretty cool. 
Now, berry production at first, it'll be a little bit slow when we wait for the berries to catch up. And that's exactly why I've gone ahead and preserved the environment. I preserve the environment around us here so I can come back over to it and harvest the berries. And actually, over here, you can see that some of the berries haven't grown up, and that's probably because maybe it hasn't been loaded in the whole time. While I'm around over at the house, 100% this is loaded in, but while I'm over at Waddle's Sweet Berry Farm, it's probably not. Getting all the berries for this farm, it will be a little bit of a waiting game. But thankfully, when you harvest a berry plant, you don't just get one every time. Sometimes you get like two or three. That'll speed it up a little bit more. With the vision planned out and laid out for this farm, I think it is time that we hunker down and get a little bit more work done. I'm gonna chop these trees, I'm gonna plant those berries, and I'm gonna build this build. You better believe it. Hey everybody, I'm back. Did you miss me? While we work through this fun little time lapse here today, I would like to talk about one of the most amazing experiences that I've ever had in my entire life. And that's not even like a dramatic overstatement or anything like that. <laughs> if you follow my Twitter or my Instagram, then you know that a couple weeks ago, I saw the, the most amazing concert that I've ever seen in my life. Now ladies, gentlemen, and everybody, today's comment of the day is all about the absolutely fire Taylor Swift concert that I saw. So if you know me, then you remember I'm a big fan of the music. Almost any music in the world, I love it. Taylor Swift music in the world, I'll admit it. I'm not afraid to admit it. I absolutely love it. Simply put, if you've never listened to All Too Well 10 minute version on a long car drive in silence and just study those lyrics word by word, syllable by syllable, then you've, you've never even really lived. You need to go do that. Relatively ish, recently, I bought a newfound love and passion, and that's gotta be going to concerts. At this point, I've been to a good handful of concerts, but my friend, I have never, not once, been to a concert like that. Let me tell you, this woman went on stage and performed for like three and a half hours straight. Banger after banger, oh, it was fire. I love it, my wife love it, her sister love it. Ooh, it was so good. But listen, listen, it gets even better. Not only was the concert like so good, but the vibes and stuff, the crowd, it was so nice, dude. If you didn't know, the vibe with this whole Eras tour is everybody's in these fire fits, and it's like crazy. Jordan May made this shirt, and so many people were loving it. It was great. Also, in the concert, like the dancing, it was great. The girl next to me was so nice, and that's just a 10 out of 10 concert. Absolutely. In fact, I want to raise that to 11 out of 10, if that's allowed. Well, 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 look who has crawled into our domain right as I was finishing the build, too. What are you doing here, sir? Hmm, the wandering scammer. You, you, you. Hmm, you have an, an intriguing bright position. I cannot say. I cannot deny. But <sighs> so this little buddy right here is known as the wandering trader. The wandering trader is a Minecraft mob that that does mob things. One terrible thing about the wandering trader is if you're not careful, it will actually walk into your sweet berry farm and steal all of your berries. The only way to safely dispose of this guy is to show him how the sweet berry bush... How, show him how it really is. Also, I mean, look at this guy. Who does he think he is dragging his precious pets through the sweet berry plants and hurting them? Listen, friend. How do you like the berries now? How do you like them now, huh? What, what do you, you think? think? Eat the berry. Eat the berry. That's what I thought. Oh, no. Oh, oh. I pushed it too hard, too far. Now all I have is these precious llamas. So, friends, how's the build going? Oh, it's absolutely going. I had a very square pergola just a second ago. You shouldn't have seen it. And, and that's why you didn't. So, I came back in and I modified the build a little bit. And I tried to make it look a little bit better. I think it's, I think it's shaping up. As for the sweet berries themselves, they're inside of this farm now all the way. I think I'm going to plant them out to this spot right here. Which means maybe I come back in and, like, decorate up the riverfront a little bit. That could be nice. I did a little bit of calculations, and of course, for Miss Swift herself. At this farm, it is 13 berry bushes long on one side, 13 on the other. That's going to equal 26. Plus the three in the middle, that's 29. This is almost a 30 by 30 farm on day four. I'm kind of tempted to make a shorefront here, a river line of like cherry blossom trees, but I, I don't know. I, can't, is it, I feel like that might be random. It's safe to say that so far today, <laughs> it's been going so well. I'm so happy with this. Add a couple of trapdoor touches right there and then absolutely come back in here with a little bit of light. 
Now, you know my hope and dreams one day would be that beautiful looking iron lanterns in here, but we just don't have that position quite yet. Unfortunately, for now, we'll have to put plain old torches, but I mean, I don't know. I feel like to add to the aesthetic right there. It's a simple, a humble pergola at the center of Waddle's Sweet Berry Farm. I don't know. I, I think it fits the vibe. I think it's nice. Now, pretty much, the very final thing that we're going to need to put on today's build here is some kind of entrance thing, something at the front. This is what I was thinking. Maybe we make, like, a grand entrance, a proper fence line along the front of the build. Maybe what we could do is do, like, sections of, I don't know, like, five or something like that, go up, and then run it over again. At the side of this thing, all I think I'm going to do is kind of just, well, to be honest, kind of just end it. I don't know if I have to worry about running a fence line all the way to the back of the build because... Well, actually, because it's pretty simple. You see, my friend, I would like to save room for expansion. If in the future, any time I would like to come in here and expand this thing, all I need to do is come over and push it out to the side, push it back, and push it to the other side. Nice and simple, just like that. With this build here today, I was a little bit strategic. We ended with this nice long row right here, and it's nice and straight. By not putting a fence on the side, if I need to harvest this thing and, like, need berries quick and safe and easy, all I need to do is walk on the outside of this thing. Then I can carefully walk down this middle row and pick anything that went over into the middle. This log is very, very nice, but oh boy, look at how good it looks when I strip it. We 100% strip those logs. That looks so good. I can't lie, I'm a little bit obsessed with these cherry leaves, so absolutely, we add a couple of these in out front to decorate it too. It will be very nice to come back in eventually and add plants out front. Now, the further we get in our world here together, the fancier the builds will get. This is all just the start here. I think to maybe make it look a little bit nicer, we'll sprinkle in some sweet berry bushes out front of it. It'll look nice, but if it was late game, or at least a little bit later on, I'd be throwing coarse dirt there. I'll be putting stone there. We actually haven't properly talked about detailing builds and making them look beautiful and finished yet, but it's all in the details. Now, speaking of the details, we're going to add a mysterious part of the build to the build today to finish it all off. For this part of the build, which is going to be pretty simple for now and very, very mysterious, I was thinking we'll need a little bit of campfires here. What I pictured we could do, this place that there, then do maybe a campfire, a campfire, and a campfire, just like that. Then what I'm going to go ahead and do is smash the campfires out with a shovel. That'll look pretty good. The shoreline right here, 100% I can push it out and hey, hey, look at these flowers. My flower friends, you're coming with me. We repurpose you right over into the build right here. Oh, it looks so much better already. We'll need a couple trap doors for the front of the build and then a composter. So wrapping things up nice and neatly here today. Sweet berries are great for a lot of different reasons, including, well, including bone meal. Aside from being an amazing source of food early game, sweet berries are great for a couple other things, including bone meal and actually including easy profit too. Now, the other great uses for sweet berries, that's definitely something we're going to dive into a whole lot more later on in the series. But for today, just know we built this farm and now we have tons of food. We also have a decent source of bone meal. Anytime I might need a little bit of bone meal for whatever, I can come over here and just get it. To wrap up our build for today's episode, where we're at is back to nature. What I'm going to go ahead and do is refill in the little bit of forest that I actually didn't even need to pull out. We'll plant some nice and tall oak trees in here and a couple birch trees too. The absolute basics to farming, our very first farm, and the secretly overpowered early game food. Early on, if you can find sweet berries, definitely get sweet berries. These things are so easy to farm and they grow so fast. They're also going to end up being pretty useful for us later on down the line inside of this world. That's all I got for you today, friends. Let me know what you think about the build down below. Smash like and subscribe. Remember to patrons get early access to the episodes if you're loving them and you can't wait for the next one. And speaking of patrons, a big shout out to them. Arlo, aka Bobby, MinecraftMojo.com, Marie 23 CK, Michael H, and the Great Vegeta. It's been me, Waddles, the Sweet Berries Forever. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Oh, and I almost forgot how could I. The world seed. I saw a couple of right guesses. It's D's. Just like it is on screen. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. But anyways, more on that next episode. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. That's right, my friends. All rumors are true. The guide is back again. Today's episode is all about smelting. It's all about building. It's all about cooking things up. And we even got a cool announcement, too. Let's just jump right into it. In honor of Minecraft Guide, episode number five. Tap that like button for me. And let's go. Truly, in today's episode, we have no time to waste. We gotta build a beautiful, beautiful building by the end of the episode. 
to kick things off nice and early, really quick here. We need to do a little bit of smelt. <sighs> and while that cooks up, please, please allow me to introduce you to a little bit of an upgrade here. Take a look at this. I added a path in between episodes. Ooh, it's clean. We got no soliciting sign because, uh, they, we encounter an issue last episode, you could, you could say. Now before we head over to the berry farm, so I can show you just how good things are going. I want to craft a brand new uh, block, but when I say block, I, I, to be honest, I use that term really lightly, loosely. An armor stand. You see in Minecraft, especially on Minecraft Bedrock Edition, armor stands are a beautiful way to show things off. Now, another flex or anything, but speaking of show things off, look at our beautiful sweet berry farm right here. And then the Waddle Sweet Berry Farm did is a true icon of this world. By far, this world's biggest farm. And, and then honestly, in my opinion, with such a beautiful farm that's really going to carry us so far in this world, there's only one way to mark the occasion, and that's got to be with that brand new berry collection. Out now. In honor of the farm that is truly kicking it all off in this world. We got coats, we got shirts, we got crews, we got totes, we got pet coats too. Oh, Ooh. There is brand new, fresh, summery, sweet merch out right now. <laughs> now look, this stand is for all of the new merch, but I, I, I don't have a shirt yet. It's early on, okay? We'll come back and get that clean shirt real, real soon here. It's probably my favorite. For now, in Constellation, I think the least we could do is improve this entrance gate here a little bit more. Make it a little bit more grand. Oh, that's not a problem. Drop a log here, strip a log there, place a staircase here. Maybe a slab right there. How about a slab there? Then maybe there too. A slab here, a staircase there, another slab. Maybe a gate? How about a fence? Ah, you know what? I'm feeling fancy, no pun intended. Maybe a couple more too. And finally, to finish it all off, at least for now, a handful of trap doors. Waddle, Sweet Berry Farm. The brand's new collection, the brand's new gate, and oh my gosh, so much productivity. Yeah, <laughs> this farm is such a great farm. It's gonna set us up for so much. I love berries. I love berries and fits, but it's time to get down to business. So far in this series, we talked a little bit about food last episode. We talked a tiny bit about crafting, but we haven't really talked about smelting. And we're missing something big. My heart dreams and desires for today's build. Minecraft, it's a game all about crafting. The part was kind of obvious, but maybe less obvious. It's a game all about smelting too. Let's talk. Starting with the absolute basics, smelting in Minecraft is a big crafting mechanic. If you're gonna smelt, basically, it's almost always done in a workstation called the Furnace. You got a little recipe book over here to show you different smelting options, but it's not really necessary. Smelting is a pretty straightforward process. In the top, we got our input, so something you're gonna cook up. In the bottom, you've got fuel. Then you have a little timer right here and a timer right there. This timer, the fire, is indicating how much fuel you got left. This arrow right here is indicating how far along smelting something is. If I go ahead and pull something out like that, the smelting will stop. We'll have to leave it inside of the furnace. Once something is done, it'll be dropped over here. Now, most things that you smelt in Minecraft, when you take it out, you get a little bit of experience and maybe even a brand new clean recipe or two too. Now, there are a lot of different smelting tips, tricks, and hacks. Great news for you, you're at the right spot. Now, if we're going to talk all about smelting, personally, I think we need to do it in style inside of this world. We got this nice little starter house over there. We got a cool farm right in there. In between, we kind of have a lot of space, but but I don't really want to like block off the starter house from over there. My dream is one day we have a path, the bridge right here, and then maybe even more path. Instead, what I think I want to do here is maybe move back into the forest a little bit. Like, say, over here, where I am right now. And well, look, look, I, I got a, I know the perfect guy for this job. It's time we call my good friend, Deep Foresters. Yeah. Now, well, my good friend Deforestals and also my other good friend Cobblestone Diggles here gets to work. I would like to ask a question. Minecraft 1.20, how's it going for you guys? Now that 1.20 has been out for a couple weeks here, what is your favorite part about the update? Have you found any trim yet? Have you found a sniffer? What's going on? Down below, drop your favorite feature from Minecraft 1.20. I love to know. And so there we go. One small time lapse later and a small bit of land. I mean, it's not much here, but I think it'll do for today's build. Today, 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 I would like to build a brand new smeltery. To build this new smeltery, we're gonna need a little bit of cleared out land. 
because this is still so early on in the world to make it a little bit easier we're gonna work with another flat piece of land here too with this build today i think what i want to do is make like a like i build it as nice and open like welcoming you could just walk right in and smell things and then i think i would like to have a caged off part that is part of the build but like open air on the side with like a completely different roof or maybe even no roof now to be able to pull all of that off I, I i think i need to dig out a little bit more land so hold on in minecraft builder terms the art of moving land around to make it fit better for your build or look better in general is called terraforming terraforming tips and tricks uh, you know me i like to make a world a little bit beautiful so we'll talk a whole lot more about it later but my absolute number one basic terraforming tip here is to not leave a flat wall check out that back wall right there that's really flat it looks ugly over here meanwhile i went ahead and dug things out and made like a small staircase if you could take a small staircase and maybe add curves to your land right here it'll look a little bit more natural and hopefully fit in next to your build a little bit better now speaking of fit into the build here i want to make the front of the build a, a decent size we got three that'll be four right there maybe that'll be center then we'll go three more and put the other side of the build it'll be a little closer to the hill maybe i'll have to move it a little bit more but for now i think it'll work then on the side of the build here we'll go ahead and walk things all the way back to right there i'm thinking maybe sections of three could look really good and then because i'm gonna have such a wide part of the build what if i made it even more fancy and on the back of this thing somehow i made like a curve right by that cave cave shmave cave shmave mm -hmm. this is something we will look at a little bit more next time but to cave ah my friend you're loaded with fuel it looks like this is like maybe fade or something the fuel smelting cave and tied up right next to the proper smeltery I, I mean it's a dream come true and even better it's a cobblestone depository as well <laughs> i think i'll be extracting a lot of the stuff from here when it comes to building inside of a minecraft world there are so many different things that you could do one thing that is not your call legally forced is 100 percent by every build set up a small station maybe have a bed definitely have a crafting table 100 percent have a chest my inventory while i've been digging out stuff is getting clogged up if you put a temporary chest near your build or maybe even inside of it then you're never going to have inventory problems again now speaking of buildings when it comes to buildings in our world we've got two we got a starter house and of course we got the beautiful wattle sweet berry farm over here i'm not going to tell you what you can and can't do when it comes to building but what i will tell you is when it comes to building if you're trying to make an area with different builds that feel cohesive together and fit together you're going to want to use similar block palettes now on a sweet berry farm i use a completely different block palette than i use on a starter house this build is going to sit kind of in the middle here to make the sweet berry farm and the starter house blend in a little bit more like better together what i could do here is kind of try and fuse the two build palettes so we got cherry wood over there and then maybe on this build we got like a lot of oak wood maybe birch wood and definitely spruce wood as well if i could take say like birch and spruce wood from this build and fuse it with cherry wood and maybe something else on this new build well if we've got three builds and we can take blocks from one build another build and combine them together on a third build it'll make your base or your town or whatever you're trying to set up feel a whole lot more cohesive it'll make sense together and so here's what i'm thinking we'll take the cobblestone from the starter house and definitely birch and spruce wood as well and then fuse that with that sweet cherry wood from the other build that we worked on last episode i want to leave the smeltery nice and open i was thinking maybe we could do like cherry planks right here and then fences or something and just have like a big window wall that could be really cool in order to pull all of that off i, I gotta build the tree farm I, I really do but for now the cherry acres it expands next to the build right and early the next morning would you look at that that thing has already grown cherry trees seem to grow so quick i don't know if it's just me or what but like yeah they grow so quick and the amount of wood inside of one single cherry tree this is like perfect for a building i love mangrove wood from 1.19 i had so much fun with it in the last world but it was so annoying to harvest cherry wood on the other hand uh, it's so easy to get a lot of so quickly cherry wood might be my new favorite <laughs> the stuff is so good so an open field i'm thinking really really open on the front of the build i'm thinking even more open if i could carry this whole like slab stripe around i think that would be really cool then for like the grand entrance of the build we got a nice and wide entrance seven blocks maybe we do like some kind of arch arches and building it's one of the most beautiful build techniques of all time fellas look to make this build look fancy to make this build blend in and maybe even to make this build a little romantic we're gonna do cherry wood sweet cherry 
in an arch. Yeah, uh, sorry about that, guys. I had to calm down. Back over at our build site with what will hopefully be more than enough spruce logs to finish up the build today. Let's make some fences. Let's place some fences and maybe a couple more logs too. And then after all of that, let's take a look at the roof. So for the roof here, we got a pretty square build here. It's pretty wide, but like not too wide. Oh no, 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 you demon, you demon. What are you doing? No, 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 you get away, get away, get away. That's what I thought, pathetic. Go! <clears throat> you terrified? No. <clears throat> no afraid? Nope. Not at all. No. No, 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 no. That's all you. You're projecting. I'm fine. I'm good. It's just a baby zombie. It's nothing. It's fine. I have no armor, okay? We got a wide build. It is pretty wide. I think with how wide this build is, to be honest, if I were to try and build, like, like a normal staircase roof, it would be really, really tall. To, you know, basically make sure this build doesn't get too tall here. A different type of roof trick that we can do is slabs. Slabs and even more slabs. If we do slabs all day long here and walk up and then back down, we'll be using slabs here instead of staircases. Because, of course, the slope is a little bit more gradual, the roof will get a little bit less tall. Because every build situation is different. There's no, like, golden number or anything like that. But at least for me, typically in my head, if I got a build that is more than seven blocks wide, I think it's a good idea to either make the build taller or, well, just not do a plain staircase roof. Try and switch it up. Make it spicy. You know, it's kind of funny. When I was planning this episode, it's meant to be all about smelting and, you know, like basically just smelting, not too much else. Fast forward a little bit to actually working on the episode and <laughs> here we are spending so much time talking about building because it's such a big part of Minecraft. Being a guide and all, I really want to talk about building tips and tricks all over the place, but <laughs> for today, for today, I, for today, I think we just about almost talked enough about building. Let's talk a little bit more about smelting because after all, it's the king of today. In a Minecraft world, one of the most important things to have set up is some kind of proper smelting setup. Whether it's your own proper building or just an inside kitchen area in your build, doesn't really matter. Minecraft 1.14, the infamously amazing village and pillage update, added two types of furnaces to the game. Originally, there was one. That OG one, the tried and true trusty one, this has been in the game since the whole time the game's been a game. The furnace. Inside of the good old classic furnace, you can smelt just about anything and everything. If you got some food to cook up, maybe some more to smelt, or just blocks that you want to turn into other ones, the furnace is the best spot to start. In fact, actually, when it comes to smelting a block so you can make other blocks, like say stone cutters, the furnace is going to be the only way you can go. It's a great idea to add a couple of these things to your setup to speed it up. In your world, once you've whirled it a little bit, you're going to probably end up going mining, and hopefully find some iron. Now nowadays, once you find that wonderful iron in mining, you're going to get an item called raw iron. If you want to use the iron, you have to smelt the iron. You got options here. You can go over to your plain old classic furnace and smelt it. It'll work. Or if you want to speed things up and be a little bit more fancy, you use a blast furnace. A blast furnace is basically an ore furnace. It'll smelt these things twice as fast. Now there is a little bit of a misconception when it comes to these other furnaces. Unfortunately, they're not like more fuel efficient or anything. They literally just cook whatever you're cooking a little bit faster. A little bit of a side note here, but I remember when these things were first being added to this game, and to be honest, to this very day, I still think the mechanic is a little bit flawed. Like, I guess it's nice that it smelts faster, but, but it should totally be a little bit more fuel efficient or something inside of these special workstations. The vital one that we need to talk about is the smoker. The smoker is all about smoking your meat. This boy cooks food just a little bit faster. Oh, well, 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 this is interesting. Oh, uh -huh, that's what I'm saying. Don't mind if I do a little bit more iron for the setup. Oh, I like it. We love to see it. Anyways, this is about smelting but stone cutter. Check this out. Inside of a crafting table, if I make staircases, I get four for six blocks. Inside of a stone cutter, the ratio is one to one. If you are a Minecraft builder, simply put, the stone cutter is your favorite block in the entire game. Check this out. Up on top of my build, I did the outline technique. I've got the spruce wood on the outside of the build. I put the birch in the middle. That's going to make this build feel similar to the starter house. And then with the cherry, it's similar to the bar. But I can't lie. The roof is a little flat. One of my favorite build tricks, tips of all time, is this one right here. We start with a solid block. Then we place a staircase. Then we place another staircase, turning like that. We go around and do it again. We go around and do it again. It all connects just like that. And 
This is by far one of those beautiful chimneys. That one over there, trash, garbage. This one. Oh, it's, it's stunning. It's wonderful. Next time you're building a build in your world, please, please do me a favor. Tomorrow, a week from now, it doesn't matter. But if you got a flat pot on your roof, go onto that roof and please add a chimney to the roof. Do this little staircase trick right here and then just step back in, in awe and beauty. Doing a chimney on a roof and then doing the staircase on the top of the chimney, it just adds so much to it. Logistically speaking, this is a smeltery with a couple of chimneys on the roof right there. It is still flat for sure, but maybe it's a little bit better looking. I like it. Furnaces, furnaces. We got three different types. We got one for the food. We got one for all of the ores in the world. And then we got one for everything and anything. But what about fuel? In Minecraft, the most basic fuel smelts in multiples of eight. I personally consider the most basic fuel coal or charcoal. If we put one piece of coal in a furnace, it will smelt up eight things. This could be eight cooked mutton. This could be eight pieces of iron. This could be eight blocks. Doesn't matter, but eight. When it comes to the fuel, you've got options on options on options. There are so many different types of fuel in Minecraft that you could use to smelt up whatever you're trying to smelt up. Throwback rewind. Back in episode one, when I needed a little bit of fuel, I was smelting logs with the logs. <laughs> I don't know how I always do this. Look, I don't know how I always do this, but you should never smelt the log with the log. Instead, smelt the log with the planks for the other type of beautiful fuel. If you're looking for a little bit of fuel without wasting anything at all, place three logs in the top of the furnace, two planks in the bottom, and you'll get three charcoal. Now, absolutely, do not try and memorize these numbers. It's pointless. Just look them up when you need them. But one plank will smelt about one and a half items. Coal, that's easy to remember. That'll smelt eight items. The only difference between coal and charcoal is the fact that coal can be crafted into a block of coal. There is no block of charcoal. But coal isn't the only way. In fact, it shouldn't even be the way long term. Once you're in your world for a long time, you're going to want to level things up. See, don't get me wrong. Coal is nice. Like, with a Fortune 3 pickaxe, you could go down into the caves, mine a little, come out with a lot, and definitely be able to use all of this for all of your smelting needs. But once you get a little bit further on in your world, a point that we'll get to eventually, there are so many other better fuel options. If you're a lot further than me in your world and you're looking to level up your smelter setup, definitely consider blaze rods. By heading into the nether, setting up some kind of blaze farm in your world, not only are you going to have a really, really good farm for getting experience, but also you're going to have a great farm that yields you a really, really nice fuel. The blaze rod. The blaze rod and all these other fuels are going to break out of that multiples of eight thing that you have with the coal. One single blaze rod can be used to smelt up to 12 things. However, you can make things even better by either going back to the nether and going down low or just running around in your overworld and being careful. Back inside of our world here, check it out, check it out with so much iron inside of the inventory. In fact, over a stack, it's absolutely time for a first bucket. When I was building the starter house, I almost had a terrifying incident with a hole in the ground. The hole was right over here. I had to cover it up. Down there, down low in a hole, we got lava. Oh my gosh, this is... I mean, look, lava is definitely taking a 0 to 100. Call me cheap, whatever, but I don't want to use this lava inside of the furnace quite yet. I want to save the bucket for something else, but if I did, 100 items. 100 total. Using a bucket of lava, especially if you have a lava farm set up inside of your world, that's genius. Big brain. Now, the only downside to the whole lava thing here is it could be a little bit tricky to get, especially early on in your world. If we're talking about basic smeltery, do not use lava. It's just, like, expensive. But if we're talking about a fancier one late game, maybe automatic super smelter, we'll build it later, then absolutely 100% use lava or blaze rod. But did you know there's one more that's always forgotten? And, I mean, I'm not talking about the block of coal. That'll smelt 80 items. Really, really good. Next time you're in your world looking for really, really good food, throw kelp in the furnace and cook it up into dried kelp, and then absolutely, in fact, 100%. Do not use the dried kelp for food. It's terrible. Instead, use the dried kelp for even more dried kelp. Take the dried kelp inside of a crafting table and craft it into a block. One single block of dried kelp will smelt up to 20 things. And it's so easy to farm too. Looking back, I feel like the dried kelp block was added relatively late in the update cycle of 1.13, and I kind of always forget that you could actually use the dried kelp block for something in the game. It's not just like a... Like a strange building block or something like that. It's actually a really good smelting thing. It's a nice smelting thing to have, but it's also just something that unfortunately we're not going to be able to get to today. Now, uh, speaking of today, today's build, I've been progressing it slowly while we've been talking about smelting and everything like that. 
to finish it up, we need a little bit of a better floor on the inside. I was thinking Corsair, and I think Corsair would look really, really good in here. After all, I want to keep it open, and with it being like open to the outside world here, coarse dirt, path blocks, combination in there, it'll blend perfectly into a road that I'll add in later. The only downside, I guess, to using coarse dirt here is 100%. I'm going to need to go find a gravel deposit somewhere nearby to get a little bit more of this stuff, but that's no big deal. Gravel, 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 gravel. Where could you be? I know 100%. I think there's, yeah, there's a lot sitting here. I don't want to take the stuff on the surface, but down here, sure. And you know what? While we're out and gathering resources, I might as well get a little bit more leaves, too. I want to make this build look beautiful. I'm almost tempted to leave this cherry tree here. Like, what do you guys think? <laughs> it's so beautiful. It's so random, but I, I just love these things. They're so nice. For now, here's what I was thinking. Just because I'm not really in that excess mindset, I'll just spill it out of the build a little bit, and I, I mean, I think it'll look nice. Maybe add a couple more paths in here or something, but yeah, for now, that'll do. Outside of the build, I mean, it's looking pretty nice. I turned a couple logs to try and detail it, but maybe to detail it even more, I could come back in with a very beautiful type of cobblestone variant. We don't have it quite yet. Or since I don't have that variant quite yet, I could at least add a couple bushes out front. That'll help. And speaking of bushes, to make it come to life even more, we got real bushes thanks to the farm over there. Now over here inside of the build, while I've been working on it today, I've been slowly throwing in more details. I think we're like looking pretty good. I know for sure, another thing I like to throw into the build here is another blast furnace. We're gonna be smelting, caving really, really soon, so the more furnaces you can add, the better. Yeah, by the way, with this stuff, it's smarter to work smart. Like, if you have a lot of blocks you're trying to smelt up, instead of loading them into one furnace and just waiting and waiting, maybe split that load up and do a couple different furnaces. I mean, that or another beautiful thing that you could do that we'll definitely do later on in this world is auto smelting. Hook some hoppers up to this bad boy chest too, and well, you'll be set for a long, long time. And so for the smeltery, the very humble but essential build that we'll have in our world, I think that's just about it. As we continue to get a couple more blocks, we'll 100% come back in here and detail it a little bit more, add to it, expand it, and maybe even automate it. For now though, then for the ultimate basics to smelting 101, that's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you all so much for watching. The very final thing I like to tackle is today's comment of the day, which is all about the sweet berry farm. Another amazing use for the sweet berry farm, I completely forgot about it, is keeping things safe. If you've got, say, a village you want to defend, and you got pillagers being annoying, you can plant these bushes and let them just, uh, you know, take care of themselves. It's genius. I completely forgot. Anyways, check out the merch. There's a link down below the video. And smash like and subscribe for more. It's been me, Waddles. I'll see you all tomorrow. Hey, hey, by the way, I haven't forgotten. We're going to name the cabin next episode. As the sun slowly dances towards the horizon of our world at the end of day number 33, friends, it's time we make an upgrade. Today to guide is back, baby, with some great blue upgrades. In today's episode, we're going to talk all about how to find those diamonds early on. Do me the biggest favor of all time and tap that like button real quick. And then, oh, the house name. Haha. <laughs> If you left a name back a couple episodes ago, I would like to thank you deeply. There were so many good ideas, but I feel like Cozy Cottage. I mean, this is like immaculate for this exact area over here. I mean, after all, we got the true owner of the world right here, the tree. We got the house over there. We got the smeltery, the farm, even the initial setup. <sighs> I don't know if there's a vibe cozier than this one. It's perfect. Today's topic is one of those topics that needs no explanation, but long story short, when things are getting more serious in your world, you may want to consider the shiny blue diamond. <clears throat> you are absolutely going to want to consider diamonds. Not only are diamonds the ticket to better clean armor, but in 1.20, they've gotten even more uses than ever. These things are in their prime. Now before we head off diamond excavating today, there are a couple preparations we should make. Step number one, early game is dangerous inside of the cave. It's very, very dangerous. If you remember how we set it up in episode number one, we're in hard difficulty. And I raised the stakes today here. We're in hard difficulty with a goal of zero deaths, which means it's definitely time for our first set of armor. If you're planning on looking for diamonds, 100% you're going to need to gear up with some armor. 200% you're going to need to gear up with an even better pickaxe. To mine diamonds, you'll need at least an iron pickaxe. So get that. Now look, look, it's not like my iron situation is hurting. I'm doing very, very good. But we could be smart with our iron here. And instead of making a sword, we can make an axe. This will deal a lot of damage. And it'll let me chop things like, like a crafting table out too. 
Nothing bad is gonna happen, but just in case, we're gonna go ahead and leave some of these backup supplies over here at home sweet home. Now we had a topic that we touched on a little bit in the other mining episode. We talked about coal generation and really just ores in general. Ores are gonna generate completely differently ever since 1.18. Finding diamonds is a job that's gonna send us really, really deep today. Before you go deep, you need coal. Now you can go ahead and get your hands on that coal in a number of different ways. Maybe start with finding a small cave near the surface and pop into that thing really, really quick and pick up some of the coal. No matter what you end up doing, I highly recommend that before looking for diamonds, you bring like at least a stack of coal with you. More if possible and wood too, just so you can make more tools and torches. Coal, wood, tools, armor. For diamond hunting, we just about got it all. And speaking of got it all, I've got it all with that brand new berry drop. Ooh, look at this thing. This is a graphic overlay. The amazing designer this merch collection made. That designer? None other than my embodiment of perfection. Jordan. Dwight. If you're into all-out summer vibes and representing the best food farm in this entire world, then check out a berry collection. It's out right now. The final thing that I can recommend you bring with you when looking for your diamonds the very first time is food. Food. And a little bit more food depending on your meal of choice you might need a little bit more food or a little bit less food but either way you're gonna want to be properly satiated when you're down inside of the caves now uh, speaking of the caves it's time we get our hands on a little diamonds when it comes to diamonds in minecraft 1.20 good news you got a lot of options there are so many different methods for today's episode i think what we're gonna do is focus on maybe like two main methods no oh no oh you know what you know what i don't even care about you anymore you don't scare me i'm fully suited up you go away go leave goodbye that's what i thought <clears throat> today we're gonna focus on like two main methods for finding diamonds for method number one here we're gonna run around inside of our world the thing that i've done well in, in the other episodes we will run around a little bit inside of our world and find the first promising looking cave by promising looking cave i'm talking something that's like at least a little bit uh decently sizable like this boy right here it's a big cut after you've successfully located a cave, I want you to pop into that boy and slowly start moving your way down. You're gonna need to check out the cave, obviously, and see if it's, like, actually a cave or if it's just a small, tiny little thing. If it's actually a cave here, it's gonna keep going and going and going. And, oh, look at this thing! We might be lucky right off the bat. All right, so once we move into this cave, slowly, we're gonna want to place torches uh, about, like, 20 or so blocks apart. By placing torches down, we're gonna light up the cave. And by lighting up the cave, we're gonna make it a whole lot safer. My number one mining tip for mining inside of a dark cave is, well, take everything. It's so, so important, especially early game. Especially the coal. My number two mining tip of all time is light it all up, make it nice and bright and really bright. The brighter, the better. While moving around inside of our cave here, we're gonna wanna make sure we have a quick and easy emergency escape exit. If something goes really, really bad here really quick, we're gonna wanna be able to turn around and get out of here. So definitely make sure you mark a staircase or something. Now, if my ears do not deceive me, walking around inside of this little cave here, I hear uh, a squiggly guy making some weird, strange sounds. All right, so creeper technique of the tactic 101. We never even talked about this yet. You hit the creeper, you back up, give it a little bit of cool down. With an iron axe, it'll be three plain old hits if you're not creating it. And hello, my friend. You come with me. Another trick you could use with the... Hey, never mind. I'll talk about it later. Oh, you know what? I should talk about it. The hot bar setup. Highly recommend on your hot bar here. Having an iron pickaxe, maybe an iron axe, and then extra blocks. Also have your food queued up and ready to go. The goal is deep here. We're looking for diamonds. We need to get as deep as possible. Hopefully as quick as possible. Diamond generation inside of Minecraft. No skeleton. You leave me alone. Diamond generation inside of Minecraft to 1.18 and up. It's all below Y14. On Java Edition, with the help of the F3 screen, we can find that we're actually already at Y11. So, technically speaking, we're definitely in diamond range. I could turn this corner right up here, place the torch down, and... Diamonds. Oh, sweet, precious blue diamonds. I called it. If you are professional, it is inevitable. Eventually, you will find a sweet diamond. You will turn the corner, and it'll probably continue to be dark. It's a good idea to move past those sweet, precious blue rocks, place some torches, and make sure it's safe. Then come back and collect that pure profit. Um, look, I'm a little bit delusional. I, um, 
Well, I really wish that somebody would have told me that one a little bit sooner. <sighs> but anyways, uh, I guess carrying down, it was a little bit high up still. Once we hit about Y0, we're going to start seeing a brand new block fade in here. And that brand new block is a beautiful one. Say hello, please, please, warmly, kindly to Deep Slate. Deep Slate is one of the most beautiful Minecraft blocks of all time. When it comes to building, when it comes to not building, just like looking at it, it's wonderful. Deep Slate is going to become one of our best friends inside of this world, but probably not yet. But Deep Slate is not going to be the only different thing you find down low. When mining rated that cutoff from stone to Deep Slate, you might be able to find normal iron, but also something new called Deep Slate iron. There is no difference between the Deep Slate ores and the plain old the normal ores. They just like aesthetically look different. They're going to have the exact same drops. Now, uh, wandering around this cave here, talking a bunch, everything like that, I tend to like lose my way. A great way to mark the way that you actually need to go is with something very different. Like say cobblestone. That would never generate here, so I'll know that when I see this, I need to turn and go up. Diamond to diamond, sweet and beautiful diamond. You come out, come out of wherever you are. Now that we're solidly in the deep slate range, I mean, gonna have to continue to watch out for mobs and stuff like that. But being solidly in the deep slate range means solidly. I could find diamonds too. Oh, and to listen to that actually, uh, and look at this right here. You can see if we look closely, there's particles dripping, and you can hear a drought. That means we got an aquifer right in here, or a chunk of water. Hmm, that's interesting. We'll come back to it. Even more importantly for us right now, especially, we have a very big cave here with a lot of deep slate. Now that we have this cave that opens up a little bit more, of course, logically, we're going to be exposed to even more blocks. If we can look at more blocks quickly, that's just basically going to be better. And hey, the first redstone of the world. Oh, it's wonderful. And a creeper too. No, no. Redstone. Oh, redstone is another ore. I, I love caving for the first time because I kind of get to introduce every single one of these things as if you, as if you know nothing about Minecraft and have never seen these things before. <clears throat> yeah. Redstone is beautiful. This is going to be our ticket to golden, wonderful farms inside of this world. Something I'm so excited for. We're going to go ahead and try and pick up all of the ores that we can pick up today, but we need to conserve torches too. Now that we're getting deeper, we're actually going to stop finding coal altogether. The generation cuts off. We'll have to remember our goal at hand today, which is diamonds. And even though we're in the deep slate range, we could get deeper. A Minecraft world generates from like the top of this thing. Well, from the top of this thing all the way down to the bottom. And the bottom is going to be at Y-64. So we got to be careful here with these mobs. Oh, you can't get up. You can't get up. It's so sad. I feel so bad for you. Let me help you out. All right, wise guy. All right, all right, wise guy. You, you got to calm down a little bit. I didn't mean to help you out, but like you annihilate my whole health. <laughs> we got to be careful. One hour later. A considerable amount of time later, and here we are. We're golden. We're good to go. A zombie crawls out of the depths poetically to try and reach me, but no, you can't stop me. Now, uh, we need to move a little bit farther down, and we're going to need to watch out for things like skeletons. That incident will not, it cannot happen again, and it shouldn't either. We're going to be more careful. What we're going to do here before we get to, like, too crazy into things is try and move... Ooh, Amethyst Geode. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, we're going to try and move around here and cover our bases by, like, moving around and placing torches down. While we're doing this carefully, we're going to try and scan every single block that we possibly can. We want to look everywhere. Top, ceiling, floor, anything for diamonds. Now that we're surrounded by Deep Slate, we should be able to find this stuff literally anywhere. There's going to be glow lichen all over the place trying to fool you, too. It's disappointing. Now, real quick, let's take a quick break because we found one of the most beautiful things of all time you could find. Ah, uh, this thing, my friend, is covered in smooth basalt. We move through the basalt, we get calcite. After that, we move through the calcite, we get amethyst block. This is an amethyst geode. We'll talk a lot more about it in detail later, but long story short, if you want amethyst for, like, spyglass, for, like, decoration thing, whatever you want to do. Oh, gold, 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 gold. I was trying to make a staircase down to get to the entrance so I could finish my sentence there, but ooh. Haha, <laughs> good first gold in the world, too. Wow, this stuff has got to be the best ore in the game, right? It's gold, after all, huh? Amethyst. If you're looking for amethyst to build with, to decorate with, to anything with, then it's all in the amethyst geode. You gotta come over to this spot, mine this stuff once it's fully grown, which it is right now. Then you get the amethyst shard. You can make that fancy skulk sensor, you can make spyglass, you can make cool decorational musical blocks. It's pretty great. 
So this find was a really good find because, I mean, it's wonderful. We'll definitely have to come back over to it later. But also, it's wonderful because look at this. It's moving us farther and farther down. We're now at negative 29 in our world, getting even closer to the ideal diamond mining level. Oh, diamond mining. Ideally, if you're looking for diamonds, you get as deep as possible. Realistically speaking, as deep as possible could be like negative 59, but that's like the very bottom of the world. You're going to find bedrock too. You can't mine through bedrock. So instead of that, if you can get as close as possible, say negative 50, negative 54, whatever, that's good. Now, my friends, we have to be really careful here because Skeletor over there with an enchanted bow, that's absolutely terrible news for me. We're going to want to try and make a staircase in here and get in here. Then if we like lure you over to me or something like that, oh, I, okay, fine. And you're gone. Goodbye. Now, at this point in the cave here, we're really, really deep. There's a guy who could really do a lot of damage to me. What I'm going to do, just to be safe in case of emergency here, we're going to go ahead and set up a small temporary room. Inside of this small temporary room, all I'm really going to put here is, well, nothing. I'm just going to make a box that I could run to and hide inside of. Just in case. Avoidance. Avoidance is the best game you can play when it comes to those skeletons early on, especially if they're enchanted, bowed up and stuff. We go ahead and maybe just try and keep moving this way and, oh, wonderful. Haha, <laughs> even more. That's cool. All right, well, it's unfortunate, but we're going to have to try and lure this thing all the way over here. We got to watch out for that enchanted bow, though. Well, 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 would you look at who showed up to my house. No, you're gone. Look at that, though. One shot from that bow and half that health is gone. Oh. Moving into a big, deep cave, kind of like what I found here, could be a little bit of a time-consuming and dangerous job, but you're going to want to try and break into the cave and drop torches down as quickly and as many as possible. There will be mobs that will follow you, but maybe we can use the mobs to, you know, take out the other mobs. Not bad. Moving around this cave, we're getting deeper and deeper. Come on, baby, it's got to be sooner or later. Diamond, Tui Diamond, where are you? As the cave continues to cut deeper and deeper, my hopes, they just go higher and higher. Getting deep here and with no sign of anything, what we could do is find a patch of gravel and start digging it out. When it comes to diamond generation, well, when it comes to diamond generation and how it actually works here, like the mechanics behind it, most diamonds are not going to generate exposed. In fact, actually, a majority of them are going to be hidden the whole time. That's going to mean if you can find blocks that are easy to dig away and remove quickly, like, say, gravel, it's definitely worth your time to take a second and take them out. With torches here, if we're quick enough, we can dig out the bottom gravel, place a torch, and let the rest of it fall on top of the torch. That'll actually break all the gravel really quickly, and then we can look around and see if there's any diamonds, or if it's all just plain old deep sleep. Another cool little hack that we could use here over at Minecraft's Java Edition is admittedly a little bit cheaty, but with the help of the F3 screen, we can scan the lava over here and take a look at that column. That is telling me what exact block I'm targeting. It's all deep sleep, which means there are no diamonds beneath the lava. Backtracking a little bit, inside of this cave, I remember seeing something over here that looks like it continued on. Um, yes, yes, it definitely does. We gotta check it for mobs for sure. Definitely doesn't. Definitely doesn't go anywhere. Maybe, may maybe it doesn't. It kind of looks like, yes, it does continue down this way. Cool, cool, this is good. We continue the journey in the depths and oh, 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 that's beautiful. We continue the journey into the depths over to a spawner. Now, over at a spawner, this is a completely different thing. We're going to have to talk more about this a little bit later on. But over at a spawner, you're going to have mobs that spawn and spawn and spawn continuously. You know, oh, a carrot. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, you got to move into this thing and light it up as quickly as possible. The area around it, too. Oh, this is so good. Saddle? Oh, no saddle. Oh, man, that's a little bit of a bummer. But we do have a carrot. We got a carrot and a brand new recipe, too. And some, even some special prizes here, too, including a little bit of string, which means I could actually make a bow. This buddy right here, we're definitely going to come back to this thing. When you find a spawner, light it up, mark it down, like write the coordinates and keep it safe. Do not let a mob go in there and blow it up. It'll be gone forever. The diamonds, come on. I'm getting so frustrated. I do it all the tricks, all the tips, every single one of them. And they're nowhere. No, no, no. Every tip that's been said, every trick we talked about it, <laughs> I'm, I'm losing hope. Hope is leaving. Like a sad damsel or something, I'm definitely in distress here. I cannot find any diamonds down low. It's not working. It's true, I found lots of other wonderful profits, but these profits are not the profits I've always been hoping for, dreaming of. There's other things. I've found every forsaken patch of gravel. 
I dug it all out. I started high, I, I went low, and even lower and lower. Nothing. I found a geode, I backtracked from a geode. I mined, and lost a pickaxe, and I lost a pickaxe, and <laughs> all it took is, oh no, oh no, 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 we can't, we can't do that, no, no, no. All right, listen, friends, we did it. We, we finally did it, and I got a big brain plan. We got a little bit of a problem right there, but we got a bow. We also got a brand new pickaxe, and we're going to go ahead and make sure our inventory space is clear. Once we pick up that sweet, sweet diamond, we're going to want to be able to pick it up right away. You left. You literally left. I made a bow for nothing. <laughs> All right. All right, well, uh, once you find... Oh, there you are. You're going to mining for me, huh? Oh, and with a skeleton friend, too? That's wonderful. No, stop it. Once you find the diamond, before you pick that thing up, you're going to want to backtrack uh, or, like, look around the cave nearby and light it all up, clear it out of mobs. It would be the worst thing in the world. Oh, you dropped a bow, too. You did not. Stop it. I didn't even need to make it. <laughs> They're tormenting me. So we're gonna go ahead and move around the cave a little bit here and just make sure it's nice and clear If there's any ores nearby definitely pick them up. You never know you dig out an ore you expose even more Wow, this is beautiful. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah Very enticing. So what we're gonna go ahead and do here is just in case drop that back there and diamond sweet wonderful diamond You come and won't oh not just one. No. Oh All right, fine once you find the diamond, definitely make sure you have room in the inventory for the diamond. We'll put a temp chest there, and I'll come back to it. It's right by the geo. Pick up that diamond, and oh, you get that clean advance when we did it. We're the king of the world. Now, now that we are down here, and we've uh, already found diamonds, we, we know that they could generate here. Of course, being really, really deep inside of our world, we could find more. My goal here, if I can get out of this operation today with, like, even four to, to six diamonds. Uh, a low bar, but a bar. If I can get four to six diamonds... I'll be so happy. Ooh, look at that. That would have been bad. That would have been so bad if you jumped down on me. No, thank you. That would have been terrible. Wait a second and look at this. Uh, I was by the geode and I mean, I guess if I jumped to this cave, I would have would not have seen it, but we've been so close the whole time. I'm running through this cave and I'm lighting even more up, which is cool. I'm not really finding diamonds. That's not cool, but but I made a huge mistake when I found this diamond. I really only took out the diamond and didn't dig around it. Sometimes diamond chunks can generate and be like a little bit disconnected. It doesn't look like that happened here, so that's a little bit awkward. But if it's disconnected, you can mine like one block out. Oh, and find another cave. Okay, sure. Why not? Find another cave, but oh boy, we gotta be careful here. We got a friend right down there that doesn't like me. Alright, so carefully making our way deeper down into the world here, we've got a cave. M maybe we can find a couple more diamonds. Please, I beg. Now while I run around inside of this cave, I would like to briefly talk about the other method that you could use for finding diamonds. If you seem to be struggling in your world, like you just got really bad luck or something, and you can't find any diamonds for whatever reason, then what you could do is another method called the branch mining. Long story short, for branch mining, you're gonna get as deep as possible, say negative 54, and basically just dig a hallway. Whether you're brand new to the game or like an OG, a veteran of the game, the method is so straightforward that I feel like I don't even need to show you, but I mean, I, I guess if you got any questions about it, ask them down below. So, 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 when it comes to a mining time lapse, unfortunately, we didn't really get around to it in today's episode. But when it comes to more diamonds, oh baby, we definitely got over to it. So, right there, that's four more diamonds. We go ahead and dig around this thing in hopes of maybe like a little bit more, a little bit more. Probably not because it was all connected. Uh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't look like more diamonds, but that's fine, that's fine. What if I told you I found even more? So inside of this big cave here, I've been running around and I've been trying to take as much ores as possible. I've also been looking at the floor, the ceiling, the walls, you know, everything like that. I could at this point, if I wanted to, stop and try and take out like gravel patches. There is always a potential for more diamonds there, but uh, I think it's fine. It's fine. When caving, mining is so tempting to just keep going and going and going. At least for me, this is one of my favorite parts of the game, but at a certain point, you're going to want to call it. The longer you go down here and the more valuable things you run around with, you know, things like all oh, these inside of the inventory. Ah, well, if something bad were to happen to me, it would be more and more tragic with every minute I'm down here. 
Unfortunately for today, we're going to 100% end with at least a little bit of our goal. But we're not going to, like, exceed expectations or anything like that. Unless... Unless there's, like, one chunk here and then another right up there. So, let's see. I've been hearing skeletons. I heard them when I was... Oh, there's an enchanted skeleton. I don't like that. No, 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 no. Skeletor, Skeletor, what you doing? I see you over there. Oh, I hear a witch too. Oh, that's terrible. That's that's very deadly. Oh, there you are. Oh, no. Okay, so <laughs> that's funny. You know, I kind of feel like I manifested that one on us right there. I was talking about how it could get more and more dangerous, and then sure enough, it got more and more dangerous. Diamond, you come with me. I don't know if we're going to have time to, to check out even more today. We'll have to come back and visit the witch another time. It's just laughing and laughing. It's taunting me. Terrible. I mean, sure, sure, a little bit more gold while we're at it. I don't mind if I do. Just check every once in a while if you're doing this one. But my friends, I'm an empath. We go ahead and let that witch live to see another day. After all, I who would I be to walk in and just ruin somebody's day like that? Like, I don't know if you caught the witch's face or anything like that, but it was like literally smiling and laughing, having such a good time. I'll mark that part of the cave because there's definitely more down there. Now, what do I want to bring back home with me? And so, my friends, for today's episode, the most basic way to find diamonds, all you really got to do is find a big cave on the ground. Ideally, the bigger the better. Some of them go pretty deep, and then move down deep into that cave. If you can find a cave that cuts almost straight to deep slate, that's even better. If you're lucky enough to find a cave somehow that cuts basically straight to deep slate, then that's exactly it. That's 100% what you're looking for. While you're headed down there, because it's so early on, it's a great idea to take every ore that you find along the way. Oh, and uh, don't get too greedy. Definitely don't get too greedy. Bad things that happen, the more greedy you get. Find a cave, get a diamonds, <laughs> and get out of there. Oh, for sure. Ah, you have no idea how good it feels to be back up in the comfort of a home sweet home up on the surface. For today's mining haul, we end with a total of six diamonds, a little bit more than a stack of amethyst, and a whole lot of iron. Look at that. Almost a stack. I'm gonna smelt that up right away. When it comes to copper, I mean, I, I did okay as well. There's some copper. But really, today, it was all about the diamonds. Now, I mentioned earlier, but seriously, there are so many other and actually better diamond methods. The better, more advanced diamond methods are things we'll be talking about a little bit more once we're geared up. If you want to know about some of them more right now, though, check out this video, because we're done. I was going to do the comments of the day as the name of the house today, but a bonus one. There was another comment that got me really inspired about calling this the Welcome Center, which I really liked. I like the idea. One day, somehow, there'll be a world download for this world and being world spawn. I mean, you literally got a Welcome Center right there. It's really cool. And speaking of world download, World Seed. <laughs> Maybe I'll have a little bit more time to dive into it more next episode. We were very, very busy today, but the official World Seed, I did reveal it at the end of episode number four. But it is D's. To get this world, I typed in a word just like that. Uh, but if you want the numbers to copy it or whatever. Mm -hmm. D's what? Oh, well, I, I don't know. Why would you ask that? That's like a weird question to ask. Anyways, smash like, subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching. Check out the sweet merch. It's linked down below. Leave a comment to be the next comment of the day in the next episode. Goodbye, everybody. This is me, Waddles. Well, welcome back to the guide, everybody. This is me, Waddles. And oh boy, today I got another banger in store for you. In this episode, we'll be heading out on our very first official exploration trip. We'll be talking all about things you should know when exploring, how to find specific biomes, and to maybe, if we're graced by the good graces of King B-Dogs himself, maybe we'll find one of the best mobs ever. In honor to satiate the proper owner of this world, your crafting table tree, please leave a like on this video. Please. It wants me to tell you I'm in no danger too. Whatever that means. So yeah. Ah, exploring, exploring. Uh, guys, I'm so excited for this episode. Exploring is one of my favorite things to do in Minecraft. There's nothing quite like the feeling of wandering around in your world and finding things that you need. And maybe even they're close too. I can't wait to explore, but we're gonna have to wait because before we can go out and do all of that stuff, we're gonna need to clean up the inventory a little bit and grab the supplies that we're gonna need. In the last episode, we struck gold. And by gold, I mean copper. We found copper, we found a geode, we found diamonds, and we found redstone. The first big supplies that we're going to make here for exploring today, a spyglass, we'll talk more about it, and then a compass. Then we're going to take this compass and go over to the ocean, romantically. Over by the ocean, and by ocean I mean river, we're going to find my humble little sugarcane farm that has sneakily been growing in every single episode. 
Crafting table tree, oh crafting table tree, I bring you a tribute. All of my paper in the world. We turn a paper into paper. Then we take the paper and turn it into even more paper. Then using a little bit of logs, we take the paper and turn the paper into a paper table. Michael will be proud. Now look, I having a lot of fun building the builds inside of our world. You got a humble house right there. You got the smeltery over there. Next up, the next fire build is gonna be the crafting table room, or or I should say cartography table room. Out under the sky. So beautiful. Ah, maps. We'll talk a little bit more about it in a specific episode later on. But I always neglect them. They're beautiful. Don't neglect the map. You can look at your build, your whole world from the sky down. Even better if you combine the map with the map table and a little bit more paper. You can zoom the map out. When we zoom the map out, of course, it... Well, you know, it zooms out. We can go ahead and repeat this process a couple times until we get a big boy fully zoomed out map. When it stops working, that means it's done. We go ahead and take a look at it and ooh, maybe we'll be able to stay on this map for today's journey. We'll see. Now real quick, while I run around and gather the rest of our supplies that we're gonna need before we set out, give me your best exploration tip down in the comments below. I've given you a lot of tips, help me out. Maybe you show me something I never knew. It could be about anything. Something you need to bring, a good biome to find, your favorite berry. I don't know, give me something. Well, 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 I swear I've been sleeping perfectly fine, excuse me. Do it, I dare you, swoop down at me. Come on, let's go, you're burning up, you don't got much time left. No, Phantom, come on. Speaking of sleeping, do not sleep on that warm berry collection. Brand new merch, it's out now. Big thank you to the people who picked it up so far. You're amazing. We got a bed, we got a spyglass, we got a map, we got a lead for something else. We'll talk about it later, and we got tons of extra food. I've also got that fresh armor. All I'm gonna need is a ride now. And speaking of a ride, ah. I think I see one. I think I see one. <laughs> Boat, baby, you're coming with me. And one of the biggest exploration tips that I have for you that we touched on in the mining episode, boats. They are the way. Well, I mean boats or even better if you got a horse with a saddle or even better something else with a saddle, then you should do that, definitely. I mean, look, I am not your boss here, but depending on what you have going for you in your world, maybe you have a big food farm already, maybe you don't really have a whole lot of food. Long story short, if you don't got a lot of extra food, or you're just early on, your food farm still needs a little bit of time to run. Well, exploring in a boat will use zero hunger at all. Now, my friends, my friends, if my eyes do not deceive me, which they never let me down, they haven't deceived me yet, we got a shipwreck right there. This is the area that we found in that mining episode where we explored a little bit. We went over to the stone shore way over there. Then we went off that way in the sunset distance somewhere over there beyond the blue haze. I think I found the pink biome, the cherry blossom. Now look, there's no hate to the cherry grove blossom biome. It's beautiful and all, but uh, today, today we have a completely different exploration goal. Inside of our little world here, I like to find a good long-term supply of sand. So there are multiple reasons that I'm looking for a desert by the end of this episode, but sand. Sand is the biggest one. If I can find a desert biome, then I'm going to have sand all over the place. Then I can take that sand back home and smelt it up into glass. Having infinite glass for all of the builds of your dreams is one of the best moves you can make early on. Also, is not to mention, there's a very beautiful and very tall mob that if we're lucky, we could find inside of the desert and bring back home too. Maps, a basic rundown of the map. Check this out. I haven't opened the map in a little while and basically we teleport. We started in that top corner, now we're all the way over here. If we want to continue to fill this map in, we basically need to leave the map out or check it every once in a while. As we slowly start to move around, our pointer on the map, I don't know if you could tell right there, it's like moving. Matter of fact, I got a better idea. Check this out. As I run around on the land right here, you can see the pointer corresponding with me. If I'm looking this way, the pointer changes and as I move around, it fills in. We need to remember to hold the map, maybe in our offhand or something, to fill it in today. <laughs> desert Smasher, Desert Smasher. Looking around over here, it doesn't appear that there's any desert. Nowadays, Minecraft 1.18 and up, the, the beaches can get pretty big and a little bit deceiving, but that's definitely not a desert. One big project and that thing's gone. One big sail right over to there, and that thing is mine. Oh, wow, not to flex with this seed. I just think I'm in love with it. It keeps going and going and going. It looks like we're going to have an ocean over there. That's going to be perfect for exploration. We got a giant tree biome right over there, a really cool structure, and even a flat area where I could build some kind of dock town right over there. But seed, uh, world seed. <laughs> I forgot to say it in episode five. I may have forgot to say it in episode 5, but fans of the guide series would know that I actually mentioned it right at the end of episode 4. Somebody guessed it right, 
and we talked about it at the end of episode 6 as well. The seed. The world seed for our humble little long-term guide series world here is gonna be D's. Yes, that's right. Lowercase every letter. D-E-E-Z. Wait, what was that? D's what? <laughs> oh, my friend. You never ask D's what. Don't ask it. The seed is made and shot in Minecraft Java Edition, but thanks to a lot of the changes that it made recently, the seed should be pretty similar on Minecraft Bedrock Edition. The only major thing that should be different is uh, structures. Structures might be placed differently, but when it comes to like shape of the land, biomes, everything like that, it should be the same. If you're better at gang, I mean, do me a favor, test it out, let me know. But at these coordinates, you should be able to find a dramatic hill opening up to a gigantic bay. It's quite wonderful. All right, well, that was a lot of words and a little bit of progress. <laughs> Let's jump back in the boat and carry out. Now, shipwreck, shipwreck. Hmm. Unfortunately, the devs did us dirty. They did not add the bundle into Minecraft 1.20, which means my inventory is going to fill up potentially pretty quickly. This shipwreck, seeing as it is so relatively close to home, I think I'm going to pass up on it today and keep sailing. The goal today is to find a specific biome, the desert. If we're looking for a specific biome, the desert, we might want to try and move in one single direction until we've got a clue. Now, by moving one single direction, we started at approximately 0-0. Zero, zero. From 0-0, zero, zero, if I could stay inside of a boat and basically sail in a straight line, maybe stopping at interesting looking things along the way. Like for example, I find a beautiful sign of a wonderful biome. We'll have to check it out later, right over there, Lush Cave Biome. But yeah, we stop at maybe some interesting things along the way, Dark Oak Forest included. Oh, oh no, no, no. What do I see inside of the Dark Oak Forest Biome? The witch. I knew I shouldn't have left you alive inside of that cave last episode. You disgusting, vile creature laughing it up over here. I knew you would come back to haunt me. No, you stay away from me. I don't want your potions. Exploration pro tip. It's now becoming nighttime. Inside of the menu today, moving into dark, dangerous biomes is definitely not there. At nighttime, when exploring, if you need to sleep, move out into the ocean. It's kind of busted looking, but you can place a bed literally sitting at the top of the water just floating. Like place it on kelp at the top of the block or something, and it'll be fine. And it's nice and safe too. Or at least it was. What are you doing? All right, look, you want to see how I do things over here? You give me slowness? I don't care about slowness. You're done. I, I trusted you. Uh, last episode, I trusted you. You come back to haunt me. Well, that actually worked out because I'm off of the map and I got a little bit more redstone. <laughs> I can make a new map if I wanted to. Dark oak wood, dark oak wood. And right next to the dark oak wood biome. Hmm, wonderful. Interesting looking biome over there. Haha. Uh -huh. All right, so dark oak wood, it's a beautiful wood for building, especially these logs right here. And we're going to take a break from exploring just for a second here and chop down one, two, maybe three of these trees. If you're exploring, you find dark oak saplings, I highly recommend getting at least 12 before you head back home. You see, a dark oak tree is an interesting tree. I believe it's the only tree in all of Minecraft where you need four saplings to grow. If I place one dark oak sapling down, nothing will happen. To guarantee that we have more than enough trees to continually regrow these things, we get 12 saplings. I grow the trees at home, I chop the trees down at home, and then hopefully they all drop more than enough saplings to continue the process forever. Not a dark oak forest biome. Oh boy, this is a potentially really, really dangerous biome. Especially if you're lingering around near it at a, at a night time and mobs can spawn inside of it and, and just stay living inside of it. <laughs> like me. While we're over near this dark oak forest biome to maybe hopefully keep things a little bit safer, we're going to try and stick to the edge of it, take down some of the trees by the shore. A tiny bit of time later, and would you take a look at this? 12 saplings and so much wood. We're set for our next build here, for sure. And when it comes to wood types in this world, we're doing really good. We've got oak, we've got birch, we got dark oak, we got spruce, and we got cherry. When I was finding the world seed for this world, there was one single thing that I was guaranteeing that we would have in this world near spawn. That single thing that I wanted to guarantee was cherry wood. I knew I wanted to build with this stuff from the start. When it comes to everything else inside of this world, I literally have no clue. I could very well be sending us on a 10,000 block journey today in a straight line. I guess it is what it is. Now, we sail. <clears throat> we sail in a second. We sail in a minute. You see my friend over here standing around with a rod. Maybe I could relieve you of your rod, perhaps? Perhaps maybe my drowned friend that is just walking around. No, you stay in the water. You stay in the water. No, you... 
<gasps> oh no, 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 we gotta leave, we gotta leave, we gotta get out of here, that boy is gonna take me out, to three hits with a trident, and we're done, so gone, forever, eliminated, however, maybe we hit the ground just the right way, and we get the trident, we could get the trident, and take the trident back home, and have one of the most overpowered weapons of all time, drowned friend, where are you, uh, I know you're over here, mm, where'd you go, Oh, you're in your house. You're in the house. Knock, knock, knock. Anybody home? Oh, somebody is home. It, it seems somebody is. May I please move over here? And you could like, yeah, you could just like peek and, and look at me. Really? No, stop it. Stop it. Listen, you be nice. You invited me over. Drop the trident or else. <gasps> no. <laughs> no, it actually dropped the trident. Oh, no. How am I going to do the trident episode later? Oh, it gave me the trident. I'm emotional, I'm crying. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. We got a trident, early game. Oh, it's, it's wonderful, I'm the king of this world. I stand at a pinnacle of this ocean, I look around in dreams of an ocean. I mean a desert, I look for a desert. There's no desert. All I see is the king of the, <laughs> the king of the land. Oh, no matter what I do today, my friends, we cannot use the trident. We got to fix it up first. That'll be a process, but oh, sweet, wonderful beauty. <sighs> Thank you, Drown. My luck. It is impeccable. Let's keep moving. For real this time. All right, so a little bit of time later, and look what I found. Oh, it's beautiful over there. That's a huge-looking cherry blossom biome. And if it was any other day, I would go check it out, but we need to stay on task. Now, speaking of stay on task, look at what I found over here. A beautiful, wonderful-looking shipwreck. It's a full one, too, which means three chests, which means three chests at armor trim. But for today, because we need to worry about inventory management right here, we're going to go ahead and pass that shipwreck up. I will definitely come back to it. I wrote the coordinates down. Carrying on with our biome searching goal today, we're still moving in basically one direction. But as you can see here on the map, I made some like uh, adjustments, some swerves, some curves. What I'm doing here is following the shoreline. Whether you're looking for, say, a forest biome, a birch forest biome, cherry blossom, desert, whatever, it's a great idea when exploring to follow the shoreline. If you follow the shoreline and, while doing that, raise your render distance up as high as you can bear, well, you're going to be in a boat sailing, so you're efficient with your hunger system going on, and you're going to load a lot of land in. You can look inland, like I'm doing right now, and just basically search for any biome or a sign of the right biome, like the plains biome. Oh, wait, no, <laughs> forget a plains biome. Like the savannah biome. Oh, hi, beautiful. I miss you. All right, so uh, this one's a little bit trickier to nail down perfectly, but basically, when it comes to Minecraft biomes, nowadays, they make more sense than ever. <clears throat> That's not saying much, because they were always so insane. Like, you would get the desert right next to, like, maybe the snowy tundra or something. But technically speaking here, once we find something that is kind of warm, like, I think the plains biome is maybe more warm than the forest slightly, then we find something even more warm, like the savannah biome. That means things are heading in the right direction. For sure, it doesn't always work, but usually warm biomes will be next to other warm biomes. We got the savannah, and then I think that's a lukewarm ocean over there. That could be the ideal candidate for finding a sniffer, actually. It's pretty amazing. But the water continues. Instead of running around on land and draining the hunger, it's back in a boat for me. Okay, so I'm back already. I thought it was gonna be a longer time lapse. So we were just over at the savannah biome. I moved maybe like 200 blocks in the water. And then, what do I see? <laughs> oh, oh, that's what I see. If my eyes don't trick me, which I don't think they do again, we find another ship, right? This is insane. Bad sailing record here. And we find a beautiful bamboo. <laughs> Not only is bamboo beautiful for that new wood type, gonna have to bring some of that back home, but also the bamboo jungle, the jungle, it's another warm bile. Which all of that means, on our track for the day- Wait, that's another shipwreck! <laughs> hold up, hold up, how many shipwrecks are inside of this world? There's gotta be trim somewhere inside of this world. Oh, we're coming back soon. <sighs> Should I come back soon? Mm-hmm. Anyways, anyways, we find a plains biome that moves to savannah biome, that moves to jungle bamboo biome, warm, and then it moves to another savannah biome. <sighs> we're getting warm. Well, hi, bamboo, nice to meet you, how do you do? You're gonna come with me? And you're gonna come with me, and you're gonna come with me, and you're gonna come with me too. 
I'm a little bit too excited and hyped about the future and what could potentially be here. We need to keep moving. This is back to the boat for me. Oak sapling. Trash. Go to the water. Look at that thing. Oh, my God. I feel like I need to legally move my... <laughs> I, I think I need to move my home here. What is that? It's gorgeous. Wow. That is... That's beautiful. It's breathtaking. It looks like it goes past the clouds or something. <laughs> that is insane. I mean, you tell me if I'm wrong, but the windswept savanna biome is one of the most... Oh, that's beautiful. Windswept savanna is one of the most beautiful biomes, hands down, in Minecraft. Wow. I can't stop staring at it. It's past the clouds. That's insane. So right now, right now, here's what I'm thinking. This wonderful mountain is great for three different reasons. Potential base location? Check, we got it. I'm still undecided. I'm really tempted to build in or near a cherry blossom, but like, all of these crazy mountains are wonderful. The only thing I kind of hate about this biome is the grass color. The second reason this thing is great is the view. I mean, this thing looks wonderful from the distance and up close, I mean, up close, it looks like dirt. But however, if we can get up close and, oh man, my pick. If we can get up close, then we can get on top of this thing for an even better view. Oh, whoa, no way. So not only is it gigantic, but it also turns into a, like a huge cave or something. Zombies are just waiting up down there. They're queued up. No chance I'm going down there. Creeper too. Wow, this thing is insane. It's like amplified terrain or something. It's actually kind of crazy. I have like worse frames over here next to the mangrove swamp and then this crazy thing. Anyways, uh, though, I was going to say, if we can get up high, get a good vantage point. If we can get up high in this place, combine that with our high render distance, we got a good vantage point where we could look around and maybe see whatever we're looking. Maybe see whatever we're looking for? Oh, cactus. Definitely see whatever we're looking for. For sure, certainly. Warm ocean. See whatever we're looking for. <laughs> oh, oh. I, 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 need, I need to be careful. I can't fall. All right, carefully, carefully. I'm getting closer and closer to the land. This is what I was saying. We get up high. We get a big vantage point. We can see all of the land around us. And then hopefully at the land around us, we have exactly what we're looking for, which I think we do. <laughs> now all I need to do is I need that trident luck to continue carrying on with me. Ho, 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 ho. What is that that I see? A village. Very interesting and beautiful. Oh, and an outpost too. So many cages too. Oh, they gotta be over there. That's wonderful. We're coming back for sure. But, uh, oh, no, not by the edge, please. Not by the edge. No, I'm just gonna leave. No. You know what? Fine, I'm gonna fight you. I'll fight you. You go away. Stop it. No, no. All right, so I need that trident luck, a little bit of it to come on out here and carry on with me. I'm looking for, now that I've found a desert, I keep asking. I, I want a village. Give me a village now. And I don't want just any plain old village. I'm looking for specifically the desert village. There's something wonderful that we could find here. Hmm. Interesting. Getting up here, yeah, easy piece of cake. Parkour up the mountain. Getting down from here, well, of course, it would give me the mountain that is a 100 block drop. I mean, wonderful, thank you. Yeah, I'll take a staircase, it's fine. I don't care, I'm happy. Now, look, I feel like I can jump from here. Yeah, I mean, that works. Desert, desert, wonderful desert. My plan, it all went exactly as I planned. We moved in basically a straight line, which I had a map to prove it to you, but like, this is basically a straight line. We kept moving, and then biomes got a little bit warmer. They kept getting warmer until we find the exact, oh my gosh, until I find even more than I was looking for. I uh, keep moving until I find an outpost with in the background, <laughs> a romantic terracotta mountain. Oh, this is wonderful. This is, yeah, very far from home, really, really far, but oh, that's wonderful. That's not a problem. We'll link up later. That's wonderful. Now, moving a little bit farther into the desert, we're looking for something big here. We need that wonderful desert village. No chance I'm going closer to that thing today. That'll have to wait. Over here, I see more uh, desand, sand, and then... <gasps> <gasps> there it is! I was gonna say I, I saw the desert temple from the distance. <laughs> I did not see the village from the distance. Oh, village, I love you. And while we're here today, uh, we remember the coordinates. I showed that a bunch of times. We get a little bit of cactus. That'll be good for green dye. Sand, we'll come back for it later, though. And then our ticket home. Early game, Minecraft 1.20. If you've seen any of my videos talking about this update, then you know there are two mobs in this update. I would dream. I would cry. I would tremble. I would weep severely if I was able to find a snipper right now, this second. But I can't. But I would be almost just as happy if I was able to find the runner-up mob inside of Minecraft 1.20.
Runner up mob, runner up mob. Well, 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 what do my eyes see in the distance? Could that be the runner up mob? <laughs> hey, get back here, get back here. No, you're mine. Stop. Ah, Minecraft 1.20, I love you so much. I don't know where it went in the world. It's trying to leave me, but we, we found a camel. A camel is absolutely amazing, except problem. I jump on a camel and I can't control it. I have no saddle. It's sad. Mm, pirates, mm, pirates all over the village. I haven't even talked about you quite yet either. Minecraft guide, a brand new to Minecraft. This is a villager. We click on a villager, we get a trade. It's wonderful. But what I'm gonna do instead is ravage the village. We'll pillage it a little bit inside of the village. If we're really, really lucky here, which oh my gosh, it doesn't even look real. It doesn't even look real at this point. <laughs> you test it yourself though. Wow, okay, okay, I'll take it. I was gonna say if we're really lucky, we'll find a saddle inside of, I think it's the armor or chest, which is like the lava one, the one with the grindstone, and I found diamonds, I found a saddle. I mean, while we're at it here, we go ahead and open up some of the other doors inside of the others. I guarantee it, inside of some of the other buildings here, we'll find even more chests with maybe things that could be really useful for us, like books. We'll take that too. Villages, they are one of the number one spots to stop if you're looking for some quick and easy loot and treasure. You got a lot of workstations here, you can take the workstations too, and of course the loot, the beds, and the villagers. But you also need to keep it safe. At nighttime, zombies are gonna spawn, and at nighttime, zombies spawn, they hate the villagers. They will come in here and take them out. Roll it over to the daytime, and we don't really have too much more of a problem. Mmm, sea pickles, that's delicious. Uh, but I think I'll leave it for today. Wow, I mean, I didn't think I would be here complaining that I have a saddle, but... I have a saddle. We got a saddle now, which means I can throw it right on the back of the camel, jump on it, and ride it off into the sunset. This is amazing. But what if I didn't have a saddle, and I wanted to move the camel back home with me? Well, a lot of mobs can go inside of a boat, but if we take a look at the bounding box of the camel, it's absolutely gigantic. Unfortunately, even if I move this boat closer to it, it's not going to fit inside of the boat. It's way too big. But it's not too big for a lead. Ha <laughs> ha. And that's it. That's all we need to do. That's exactly why I brought the lead. Just in case we were able to find this beauty right there and no saddle at all. With a lead that we found from the trader tragedy in the other episode. Or in other words, with a lead that we got for free. All we need to do is attach it to any mob that's too big for a boat and walk. And we'll drag it with us. If we were having trouble with the camel keeping up with me, then the item of choice. With a lead on the camel while I'm holding a cactus, it'll follow me even faster. But great news, for the most part, you shouldn't have any problem with your camel or any other mob on the lead following you. Even if, even if you get in a boat. So 4,000 blocks away, actually maybe more like 4,500 blocks away from home. That's very, very far, but I mean it's doable. Using a trick that we'll talk a whole lot more about very, very soon here is doable. We'll make this thing quicker to get to than ever before. For now, though, at this point in our journey today, all I want to do is get back home sweet home with our wonderful new friend. I have a funny feeling that the mangrove swamp arm is going to be way too dense for this big camel to move cleanly through. So instead, what I think I'm going to do is try and backtrack over to the savannah. Then I remember the ocean being like literally right there. We could easily jump into the ocean with a boat, with the camel on the lead. And as long as I don't move too quickly or get it stuck on anything, I'll have a camel back at home in no time. Ocean, wonderful ocean. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm like 96% sure that this is the ocean that connects us right back to home sweet home. Let's do this. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. hold up, hold up, hold up. It is the ocean, but look at this. If you've lost your way, like you forgot to write the coordinates down of your base before you went exploring, and I completely forgot to tell you that. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Anyways, if you lost your way, but you have a map, you can look at the map and see where your icon is. Knowing that I started over there in the top corner and my icon is over here, to get back onto this map, all I need to do is head west. On Minecraft Java Edition inside of this screen, it will show me which direction I'm facing. Right there. With that in mind, in order to get back onto this map, all I need to do is keep going west. If I move west for long enough, I should pop back up. And so, after a long 4,000 or so block journey, home sweet home. But oh, even better, it's not just home sweet home anymore. Home sweet camel. Home sweet camel. Home sweet camel, home sweet camel. I, I feel sad to say it, but the brand new build that I just built, I already have to destruct it. What I'm gonna do here to keep the camel nice and safe for now until we build a proper stable or something is I'm gonna move the camel over to the hole just like that. It's gonna fall down. Then I'm gonna get my lead back. So dirt go away and 
Dang it. Camel. The wonderful camel that we have found in today's journey. It should be safe to just sit right there forever. I don't think anything bad will happen to it. Just in case, we'll go ahead and give it a little bit of light down here. I mean, it cannot hurt. And then let's talk rewards. Look at this. Today, we did so well. Not only did we find it, diamonds, I did not expect that, but we found quite a bit of copper. I got a lot of coal and wood. We also got one of the best tools in the game, the key to transportation on land. And it's just great. I mean, look, you tell me if I'm wrong, maybe you'll remember better, but hands down, I think this was my most successful exploration episode ever in any series. Leather, leather. I got one extra leather. Instead of throwing this map inside of a plain old chest, a little bit boring, we'll actually go ahead and make our very first item frame of the world and throw it on the wall. Let's see. Uh, maybe right there. It's not going to look the prettiest, but we got our map on a wall. Now, it's sad to say, but unfortunately, we're not going to get very much use out of the trident, at least not right now, and the saddle will put it away for now, too. Well, I finished cleaning up the inventory at the end of today's episode, the comment of the day. The comment of the day is about an old trick that used to work, and... Does this still work? Like, seriously, does anybody know? I remember when this diamond hack was like a big new thing in a community. I th actually think it was in the last guide where I was talking about it, but but does that still work at 1.20? Because if it does, <laughs> add that to the diamond episode. Anyways, my friends with a desert successfully located and even a bonus friend back at home. That's it. Now, you might not realize it right now, but this camel is such a big deal for transportation, but also farms. This is one of the biggest mobs for farming in Minecraft 1.20. But, uh, more on that later. Thank you all so much for watching this episode. If you enjoyed it, well, give that like button a firm and solid tap. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe. And double check that notifications are on. Remember, the merch is linked right down below this video. Check it out. It's beautiful. Thank you all so much for joining me on my adventure today. This has been me, Waddles. And I will see you all tomorrow. Goodbye. Perfect timing. You're just in time for the next guide episode. From the left, the next banger of an episode enters. In this episode, I got big dreams. We're going to go into Minecraft's deep and dark underworld, explore a little bit, and even unbox a little bit too. Oh yes, that's right, and our camel friend from the last episode. The camel needs a name. Down below in the comments, drop your best name idea for the camel, and leave a like on the names that you like. I really hope I don't regret saying this, but the most liked name will be the name of this camel for the rest of the series. Drop a name, Shamash like, and... Let's do this, friends. It's another time. Nether, nether. Oh, boy. I was so excited for last episode. I am so excited for today's episode. And just like in the last one, today's all about exploration. Now, a couple episodes back, I was smelting some things up over in the furnaces over here. Looks like I didn't get it all. You see, if you were to have asked me five minutes ago if I have the gold smelted up and ready to go, I would solidly answer yes. Because this is our very first time heading into Minecraft's darkest, most dangerous dimension, we're going to need to talk a little bit of supplies. First things first, we throw our gold in the furnace and give it a little bit of time. The second thing, second, the dramatic music is playing for a big dramatic reason. It's time, my friends. Last episode, we got diamonds. Episode before, we got diamonds. Over inside of the crafting table. Before we go to the nether, we are going to need to make one diamond, one diamond, and uh, actually, that's perfect. One diamond, just like that. Oh, look at this, our good friend. We will save you and, and treasure you and have you forever. I love you. A pickaxe for the nether. We're also going to need a sword for the nether. 100%. I love this axe, but the sword is even better, probably. After giving it a little bit of time over here in the blast furnace, the gold is literally golden. Oh, it's beautiful. So many ingots. I never thought I could do it. We're going to need to pick a piece of armor here and make it gold. When going to the nether and making gold armor, think strategically. We could make a gold chest plate and that'd be good, but that's a lot of gold. And this don't have very much durability. Instead, to save our gold that is so precious to me, we'll make boots or maybe a helmet instead. We'll talk a little bit more about why later. For now, just blindly follow me. Thank you. Nether supplies, nether supplies. We're gonna need a bow and then all of the arrows that I... <laughs> all of the arrows that I have to my name. Wait, what's that? I hear a noise at the door, a knocking. Knock, knock, knock. Oh, come in, come in. Well, 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 would you take a look at that? This is the next tool. And actually, the thing that's going to allow us to enter the nether to begin with. You're definitely going to come with me. And then finally, I checked the chest. I don't think I've made one quite yet. Or at least I don't think I made one and put the blue liquid inside of it. Definitely not. Now, next up, I'd like to take care of today's comment of the day. I will do my very hardest to find the specific comment and pop it up on screen. But the comment was about something that is allegedly that I, I allegedly I walk right past. You see, other than getting a little bit more food, the very final thing that we need to find to get into the nether is going to be a block called obsidian. It's one of the hardest blocks in all of... 
Oh, ho, ho, ho. it's one of the hardest blocks in all of Minecraft. And oh my gosh, what do I have here? Oh, that's uh, just weird. I thought there was a cracked gravel block. Oh, <laughs> very weird. Does anybody know what this is? I just come back to Minecraft after now playing for a long time. Uh, please enlighten me. Oh, oh uh, that's wonderful. I love it. Obsidian Shmobsidian. I swear, somewhere in here, on the ground, I saw a lava pit at one point when we were exploring, running around. I need to find a lava pit. In the grand scheme of things, I have no clue where I'm going at all right now. However, also, in the scheme of things, I know where a plane's biome is. That might be a good spot to look. In Minecraft, there are many different places and ways that you could go to find obsidian, but one of the easiest ways, and safest too, is up on the surface. If we can find a lava pool like the one right behind me and then take a little bit of water and just dump it right over it, we're gonna get a ton of obsidian really, really quickly. Right after that, our next move is to pick a block next to the former pool and dig it out. We dig a block out like that, we dump the water inside of that pool, and then with our diamond pickaxe, we mine one of Minecraft's hardest blocks. Not only is it really, really nice looking, but this block is not explodable. It's also not really mineable with anything else other than diamond or netherite. It takes a long time to mine too. However, check this out. As soon as I pick it up, oh, a brand new advancement and recipes. Enchanting table in the top corner, that's magic. But also more importantly, nether portal. If we're gonna make a nether portal inside of Minecraft, at a minimum, we're going to need 10 blocks of obsidian. 10 is great, but that's skipping the corners, so we're gonna bump that number up to 14. However, lads, I'm an overachiever, if you couldn't tell. Instead of extracting what is just enough and moving on, we'll do something even more impressive, which is maybe mine, like, almost all of this out. Give me a second. <clears throat> oh, hey, but also, we put water and leave it flowing the whole time we're mining because check this out. When I dig this block, sometimes these pits get a little bit deeper and there's lava right there. If I dug it out without the water, the obsidian would fall into the lava. I'm gonna be done, so. Gone. Anyways, give me a minute. Back over at home, sweet home. If you got a weak hip, baby, sit down because, oh, oh, oh look at that right there. 32 obsidian? You never seen so much in your life, I know it. But I'm an overachiever. Remember, you only technically need 10. So now the next step here is going to be pick a perfect spot for our nether portal. There's one thing to know about a nether portal, and that is... Well, that is that it's an evil gateway to a terrible, terrible dimension. And of course, uh, logically speaking, it's an evil gateway. Once we open an evil gateway, we can go in, but also things can come out of said evil gateway. It's quite evil. Look here, I'm using a lot of words to say that Piglin can come out of the portal. You got to keep it in mind. So if you're worried about the sink being 100% safe, it might be smart to pick an isolated location for this portal. For example, this island in the bay over here. Also, it's good to know that nether portals are so noisy too. If you don't want to hear these things constantly, then place it away from your base. When it comes to the absolute basic, most simple nether portal, at minimum, you're going to need a two block space in the middle, then you're going to need to go three blocks up on either side. Once you've gone three blocks up, technically speaking, if you're on a budget, you can skip the corner. Add one more block over there, and you're good to go. With a flint and seal, we jump down from our beautiful looking portal that we just built and light it. Then all we would need to do is move into it. Hey, but not yet, not, not yet. I hate to keep you waiting, but simply put, this portal is a disgrace to all humanity. There is no chance I can leave the portal looking like that. It's tacky. Build time lapse in three, two, one. Let's do this. Today, I like to do something a little bit different. Instead of just making a plain old nether portal that does technically work, jumping into the nether and going for it, how about we upgrade this portal from the start? We make the aesthetics even better looking. To pull all of this off, today, I like to send a big shout out to my dear friend, Gold Robin. Oh, Goldie, sweet Goldie. This nether portal design is technically my own, but it was heavily, heavily inspired by the amazing work that Gold Robin has done in the past with nether portals. In the old and OG days of Minecraft, when it came to building a nether portal, you really didn't have very many options. But nowadays, it's just a modern era. The portal size that I just showed you a second ago is technically the minimum nether portal size. As long as your nether portal is a square or a rectangle with like at least six blocks of space in the middle of it, you're probably going to be good to go. The only other rule when it comes to making a nether portal is making sure nothing is in the middle of the portal itself. Like, if you put a plant in the middle of a block, it's not going to work either. Knowing all of that here, all of that basically amounts to creative freedom, baby. If you have an idea for a cool nether portal design, as long as the blocks aren't inside of the portal, you could probably pull it off. And now look, Gold Robin, Gold Robin, I hope I haven't done your name wrong because... Portal. Ah, 
I mean, I think it's okay. It's not bad. It'll definitely work for today. With our beautiful nether sword nice and finished here, it's time to go. The final bits of preparation that I want to get done here is leave the diamond pickaxe. I don't think we need it for anything in the nether today. A gold helmet, we're going to have to equip that. I'm going to go ahead and drop this one off for now. I don't need that either. Just to be safe, we'll grab a little bit more food. Back over across the river, we do not need the bed in the nether. We'll place it down next to the portal and set our spawn, just in case. And then finally, go ahead and light that baby. <laughs> nether, let's do this. All right, now, as soon as we enter the nether, we have to be ready to go. You never know with the nether. You could get a terrible spawn. Like right above a lava ocean, please no. Oh, or you could get a gorgeous spawn like this one. I mean, I guess it would be nice to be able to run around inside of the open nether and check things out, but <laughs> insanely safe spawn. Check done, we got him. After you've made it into the nether for the very first time, take a look around and maybe pick up some of the blocks for the first time. Make sure the portal is safe. If the portal isn't safe, it's time to take non-explodable building blocks, you know, things like cobblestone, and place them down. Hey, yo, 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 rewind for a second. Non-explodable building blocks. Non-explodable building blocks are typically going to be blocks that are made out of stone. Could be cobblestone, could be stone, could be deep slate. Explodable building blocks here are going to be things like planks, uh, things like dirt. You know, materials that are a little bit softer. In the nether, you got to watch out for ghasts. If this gas sees me, eh... Uh, I'm right below you, buddy. I'm right here. As soon as this gas sees me, it's gonna launch explosive fireballs at me. And these explosive fireballs, oh boy, not only will they cause a lot of damage, but they'll blow up certain types of blocks. Stone? It just is too tough. It can't be blown up. So with all of that in mind, it's time we go ahead and build us a box. And hey, yo, 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 wait, hold up, hold up. Did somebody say box? Because, speaking of box, Hold up here, real quick, it's me, Editor's coming in. Before we jump into the unboxing, I would like to sincerely apologize. I recorded a clip with my iPhone using an iPhone mic. iPhone mic is not juicy Electro Voice Minecraft mic, so the audio is going to be a little bit worse. I tried my best to fix it, but I hope you can forgive my sins. Enjoy. All right, so hey, how you doing? It's me. Maybe you couldn't tell, but a croc should give it away. Ooh. I had this boy sitting waiting for the perfect episode. Mojang sent me this box, this package, a couple weeks ago. I figure this occasion right here together is the perfect one to unbox. All right, so don't worry. I got safety goggles on for this one. We're unboxing this on my air hockey table, by the way. I wasn't playing hockey at the moment, so I figured it's kind of perfect. We flip it open, and immediately, I have no clue what to expect, but <laughs> it's beautiful. I wish you could read. Right off the bat, we got a sticker. I like it. I know where I'm going to put that boy. Then in here, it seems like we got a little bit of, hold on. In here, it looks like we got another note. Oh no, even better, they're adventure postcards. Oh, that's clean. I like that, that's amazing. Digging through continuing. Oh, what is this? <laughs> oh, no way. We got the Minecraft Tales and Trails. Tales and Tales. We got a Minecraft bucket hat, let's put it on. Oh, it fits good. My old hat don't need it. Digging through the rest of this thing, we got something else here. Hmm, a band. A tag. We got a lot of black grass. Maybe this is a new update confirmed or something. And then finally, what is this? Hmm. Oh, it's a bag. Oh, it's a clean bag too. Like never been used. Not gonna lie, I wish I had this in like the nether today. Maybe this is almost like a hint of the bundle or something. I mean, it's nice. All right, Mojang, all right. I like what you did. I see how you move. Thank you so much. This is amazing. Hey, oh, yo, hold on, hold on. Was my camera dirty the whole time? Oh no. Huge shout out to Minecraft for sending me that. You're amazing. So, what do you think of my box? <laughs> All right, well, to be honest, maybe it's not much of a box. I'm not really going to follow my box rule because my portal is nice and safe over here. Before we move anywhere, we're going to want to take note of the coordinates of the nether portal, which is going to be approximately from me. Zero, zero. Now, the nether is going to be a very, very dark and dangerous dimension. You're going to want to be very, very careful. Inside of the nether, lava flows a whole lot faster. In fact, it flows just as fast as water does in the overworld. It's really quick. When navigating the nether, it's very smart to use the blocks that are all over the place. I have nether rack here to place down and block out lava currents. If you can make your life a little bit safer by removing lava, I mean, why would you not? Another thing that's not a bad idea to do near the nether portal, now that it's nice and safe, is throw a crafting table down. With no fire nearby, the crafting table won't burn up. We could then go ahead and make backup supplies if we needed to. Another cool thing that you can do to help make sure you never lose your way is flint and steel. Netherrack is a very interesting block. Not only is it really strange and almost looks like organs or something, but also, if you light it on fire, it will always stay burning. 
forever. With this cool mechanic in mind, while we start to travel the nether, we can use flint and steel to not only light up the area around us, but mark where we're going and where we came from. Now, nether, nether, nether. Inside of the nether, we're going to find some other precious ores. You want to be careful here. There are lots of bad things inside of the nether, especially inside of the crimson or... Is this the Crimson Forest? There's a lot of dangerous things inside of the nether, but there's a lot of really, really nice things inside of the nether, too. One of those things is quartz. You mine quartz ore, you're gonna get quartz, but also you're gonna get quite a bit of experience. If you're looking for experience, it's a great call. Now, our number one goal here today inside of the nether is to explore just a tiny bit and hopefully get out of this little ravine. There is one specific block that I need to find by the end of the episode if I want to do what I want to do next. Oh, hey, I don't really have much to go off of here other than the fact that I guess I have vines over here. I suppose my first call is going to be build a staircase up to the vines, the tree thing, and see where we can go from there. All right, well, change of plans. Unfortunately, because of how the nether generates, sometimes you make your portal, you launch it, and you're inside of a cave. When that happens, I highly recommend trying to get to about Y80 or so. Well, usually like anywhere in between Y50 and Y80 inside of the nether should be good. After that, pick a direction and start digging a hallway. And hopefully, sooner rather than later, we will pop out into somewhere. The wide open nether, uh, please. Nether gold ore back there is cool. Nether? Anybody? Anywhere? <gasps> I hear it. While you're digging this nether tunnel to hopefully somewhere, and make sure you listen. Sounds are going to be a big key. The mobs make noise. Logically speaking here, if you're closer to them, they've got to be somewhere. It's a smart idea to stop and start getting staircases. Maybe up, maybe down, or just different directions of tunnels. There we go, baby. We're free. All right, now, this biome that we have dropped into, first things first, inside of the nether, is dangerous. Inside of this biome, we can find one of the most bad mobs of all time. The hoglin. We gotta be careful. Unfortunately, given our less than stellar entrance to the nether, this is gonna have to do. We have a staircase going back towards the portal, and then a pillar with a torch on it. When we explore a little bit more, hopefully we can find something a little bit better. Now this biome, the Crimson Forest Biome, it's one of the five nether biomes inside of Minecraft. In the Crimson Forest Biome, you're gonna find these crimson trees all over the place. They're actually quite beautiful. If you brought shears with you to the nether, you could use shears on these vines to get the vines. These things are called weeping vines. It's weeping because of sand dripping all the way down to the floor. A little life hack for surviving the Crimson Forest Biome? This thing right here. This is called a warped fungus. Also, blocks on a hotbar. Always keep these things on a hotbar. While wandering through the Crimson Forest Biome, sometimes, unfortunately, you may find things like hoglins. They can, like, two-shot you if you're not careful. The hoglin is very, very dangerous, but it's also kind of timid. If we show the hoglin this fungus thing or, like, place a dot or something, it'll start running away. It's perfect. This buddy over here is a piglin. You gotta be careful with it. They're acting kind of like a, like a gang. Hey, leave me alone. No. If you hit one piglin, a bunch of the piglins nearby will get mad at you. If you have gold ingots, which I don't have any, we could give it and trade to them. Hmm, nether nether, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to find a block I'm looking for today though. Ooh, this is not a great small. And so with that, I backtrack. What I would like to do is move back down into my tunnel system and maybe just try my hand at digging a tunnel in a different direction. Hopefully, fingers crossed here, we could open ourselves up to a different part of the nether. Maybe something with better blocks. Friends, I think I'm onto something. <laughs> so, back over here near my portal, check this out. We have to pay close attention to the details, the ambiance here, but the nether, it's all about vibes. If I move over here, the sounds, they get a whole lot more echoey, and it almost starts to look blue. Meanwhile, if I move back over here and I look around, the distance, like the hazy fog, it, it's kind of hard to see here, but the fog starts to get a little bit more red. I think I may have a lead for a new bio, but the ambiance inside of the nether, I know a little bit about it, and the echoey weird chamber, that usually means we have the second to most dangerous bio, or maybe the first, depending on your luck. Oh, basalt. Huh. Well, I mean, it's not exactly what I was about to say. I, I was thinking we were maybe headed towards a soul sand valley or something, but basalt works too. So, poking around over here, oh, aha, 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 maybe I am. I should have brought a spyglass or something, but you see that blue haze? 100% blue haze means you're in the Soul Sand Valley. Backtracking over towards our tunnel that we were just setting up, it almost looked like the Soul Sand Valley was maybe sitting higher up than I am right now. What I'm going to want to do is try and dig a staircase up and over towards the bottom. Now, because of how nether generation works, sometimes you will have uh, just big caves twisting. 
These nether caves are not only great for exploring around, sometimes they open up to big open areas and you can find like mobs, more blocks, things like that, but also you can find ores inside of these things too. Man. Terrible example, you're just gonna have to trust me. Skeletor, Skeletor, over this way there was the skeleton, I think it's like right over there, we're gonna have to be really, really careful. Now this is actually kind of fire because inside of the soul sand valley biome, ooh, cool bone block, but also really useful blocks up there. Continuing to use flint and steel to mark my way and peeking out to see my skeleton friend. Now, hello? Hello friend, or should I say goodbye friend, you're gone. Soul sand valley biome, they call it that for a reason. They call it a soul sand valley biome, a soul sand valley, because there is soul sand inside of the valley. Ha <laughs> ha, and that's what I need today. I see the block that I want. To get to that block, I'm gonna need to make a bridge. Well, I make that bridge, let's talk about why this biome is so dangerous. This biome's gonna have skeletons. Skeletons have bows, and that's not good. In the sky, we'll have to watch out for these ghost demon things called ghasts. And on the ground, we got soul sand, so we're gonna move slow. It's a dangerous combination. Depending on how you want to look at it, it's a little bit unfortunate that we're not out in the open, so I could like really show you the ghasts a little bit more today. Or it's fortunate. We don't really have a bow and <sighs> I don't want to deal with the gas, I'm gonna be honest. What I'm trying to do here is get deeper and deeper. The closer I can get down near the lava ocean, the closer I will get to this beautiful block right here. For our nether adventure today, other than like setting up and getting a salvage with a portal and such, all I really wanted to do is find soul sand a little bit. Soul sand is gonna be so useful to us later on. All right now, it's time to backtrack a little bit. Let's get over to the portal. Backtracking over to our nether portal, the very final thing I would like to do is still try it again. I really just want to see like the open nether. Is it too much to ask for? I make a new staircase. A very smart idea to have on hand when making staircases, tunnels inside of the nether is blocks. Lava. It pours insanely, insanely quickly inside of the nether. If I was making a staircase, a tunnel, or whatever, and lava poured out at me, that could be potentially really, really bad. It'll flow quickly. If I have blocks on hand, I could drop them down. Emergency. And make my life, like, and make my life saved. Another smart call is anytime you're building a bridge inside of the nether, build it out of a block that will not blow up, and maybe, if you're not exactly, like, so cautious, make the bridge wider than one block. So nether, sweet nether, please be a little bit better this time. It's nice, wide, and open. I mean, yeah, it's nice, wide, and open. If you know what you're doing and you're being careful here, exploring the nether in Minecraft can actually be pretty rewarding. There are two gigantic structures inside of the nether and a lot of really cool, interesting alien mobs. But if you don't know what you're doing and you're not being careful, things can get dangerous really, really quickly here. So what I wanted to do is just poke around a little bit, maybe try and get closer to this big open area and see if I can see any other cool biomes. By getting closer to this big open area, of course, I'm gonna be able to see more. But I'm also gonna find a hoglin. No way, no way. Hoglin strategy tip, a uh, survival trick. You pillar, you pillar up on a tall pillar, maybe if you're near one of those things, the hoglin will forget about you. It'll run away. Because of the insane amount of health that the hoglin has, I don't really recommend just trying to take that thing up. Ideally, you avoid it. So it looked like over that way, it's all crimson forest, and it looks like over this way, it's all lava ocean. If I had my saddle on me that I found last episode, and I could find a strider, I'd be golden. Now, unfortunately, both of those are not the case, so instead, it's back to staircase mining for me. Now that I've mined a small little staircase, and I'm right by the lava ocean, I can move around a little bit more easily, and also a little bit safer. It's kind of a, you wouldn't think it, but like, usually these ledges that are small near the lava ocean, especially if you're in a dangerous biome, they're like a lot safer. I mean, of course, you gotta watch out for gas, but because these places are so small, hoglins are not able to spawn on this thing. It's way too small of a ledge. All that I'm really looking for right now is just looking around. I'd like to move around a tiny bit and see if I can find the end of the Crimson Forest biome. Maybe out there? Using this ledge and a pickaxe here, I can run around relatively quickly and slowly clear out more blocks, making a space that's a little bit safer for you to move. If you're making a pathway right along the nether lava ocean, I recommend making them more than one block wide, just to be safe. All right, and so here goes nothing. Now that I'm a little bit farther, we can break this block in. It's all crimson forest. I think the entire nether inside of this world is all gonna just be crimson forest. I am so happy. Yeah, uh, hey, wait, no, never mind, <laughs> never mind. As soon as I say it, the vibe switches up. I see something magical in the distance and a beautiful stride or two. 
And so, I, I guess the moral of today's story is, sometimes nether exploration is a little bit tricky. Your nether experience is really going to depend on where your portal pops into this evil dimension. If it's safe like this one, it might not be too bad. But if it happens to generate into a ravine like this one, it might actually be a little bit more tricky too. Now, what a final thing for our nether basics today. Inside of the nether, there is no day-night cycle. However, back over in the overworld, the day-night cycle will absolutely continue. When you pop back into the overworld, it might just be the middle of the nighttime. Or it might be the middle of the day. Anyways, another exploration for today, that's going to just about do it. In the future, moving forward here, I, I do love that beautiful portal and it's wonderful, but I think we're going to have to maybe make a second portal somewhere else and drop it down. Ideally, I would love to be in the open nether so I could explore a little bit more. To be honest, this rain, it kind of captures how I'm left feeling after <laughs> the nether today. Like, subscribe, and thank you all so much for watching. It's been me, Waddles, Minecraft Guide, episode number eight. Remember to leave your best camel name down in the comments below and leave some likes on the comments that you like the best. Fans of the nether, don't you worry. We'll be back in the nether and exploring even more very soon. Goodbye, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow. Today's episode was hand-picked by the legendary channel members. Thank you so much. Well, hi, how you doing, everybody? Welcome back to the Minecraft Guide. By the end of today's episode, we'll have a clean XP machine and even a nice rotten flesh coker too. Let's go. Camel Bamel, Camel Schmamel. So the name of the camel bread right here is... Aha, <laughs> it's still top secret. I'm gonna give it a little bit more time. Next episode, it will be decided. Attention, attention, a formal announcement with peace and love and so much tenderness. All camel names submitted here will be fully and wholly ignored. Submit all names in the last episode. Thank you. Today, the goal of the episode is to level the world up with a brand new wonderful farm. Last episode, we swung over to the nether for this block right here. This is the baby that's going to basically enable every terrible thing that we're going to do today. Additional materials that we're going to want to have on hand to build this farm is going to be a whole lot of extra wood. We're going to need signs and fences and things. We will also need one more beautiful stone cooker, which means cutter. All of that means that it's back over to the cobblestone mines for me, or it might just be maybe over to here. I took this and listen, no, nobody saw me. Nobody saw me. I'm not caught. It's fine. I'll put it back later. It's mine anyways. Kelp, kelp. We're going to need kelp for this farm and small problem. I definitely picked up kelp, but I only have eight pieces of kelp right now. We're going to build this farm. I, I think it's going to end up being pretty close to this thing. When I found a spawner and... It couldn't have been too far. We'll test our luck a little bit. Hopefully, it'll be close enough that this kelp that I'm going to drop at the bottom of the river will be ready to harvest by the time I swing back over here. After all, we're right by world spawn, and I, I'm pretty sure this will all stay loaded in, even after I leave. I feel kind of bad, though. I, like, just jumped right into things today. No, like, warm question about how you're doing or anything like that, and that's kind of a... A terrible thing or a friend to do. So, uh, how you doing? I hope you're doing well. Are you enjoying the series? What should I build next? Uh, what is your favorite? What's your favorite color? <laughs> Anyways, rest of the supplies that we're going to need here. I, I actually think I basically have it. We're going to need wood. We're going to need soul sand. We're going to need stone cutter for blocks, food, pickaxe, iron, water. Now, the very final thing that we're going to need to have on hand if we plan on building any kind of spawner farm, zombie, skeleton, spider, whatever it is, is of course going to be a spawner. Now, finding a spawner, hmm, there, there are no specific tips that I have for you other than go down into the caves and go deep. Generally speaking, nowadays, in a post 1.18 world, more dungeons and spawners, they actually generate deep, like in the deep slide range. Back in the diamond episode, we were actually fortunate enough to be able to find a spawner. And I wrote the coordinates down in my Minecraft guide journal. So I got this journal where I write like different tips and tricks and episode ideas and kind of like episode roadmaps in. Inside of that diamond roadmap, I see some numbers. I see 53, I see negative 33, and then I see negative 13. Actually, it was 57. Not that it matters that much. I can't read and talk. 57 and negative 13. Those are the numbers we're looking for right now. And look at this, 57. Negative 13, negative 13, right over this way. <laughs> this thing is going to literally be perfect. I'm in love with this seed. It's amazing. Not only do we got like all these biomes right at spawn, but right below this area, right over here in the forest, should be a spawner. Now we got options. We can start digging straight down and get all the way down to the bottom of the world nice and quick. However, that could be really, really bad. The other option that we're going to have here to get all the way back down to the spawner is maybe set up some kind of small staircase or something. And speaking of staircase, 
Well, and speaking of staircase, that's the much smarter exact move that we're going to make next. We're going to pick a spot relatively close to where our spawner is going to be, like uh, over here, and start setting up a staircase. This staircase is potentially going to be really, really long. But the nice thing about doing all of this is, while I'm digging the staircase, I might be able to find a little bit of extra coal. Great for torches. I might be able to find a little bit of extra copper. Great for spyglasses and copper, he thinks. I might be able to find a little bit of extra granite cobblestone as well. Both wonderful building blocks. And, hey, yo, 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 hold up, hold up. One final tip that I have for you before you make a staircase down to the bottom of your world is maybe consider dropping a couple torches up on the surface near the entrance to your staircase. It would be very unfortunate if you dig a staircase down to the surface, gotta come back up because you forgot something and then is a creeper right there. Anyways, uh, by building this big staircase down to negative 33, I might find caves, I might find blocks, I might find ores, a lot of things, but I also might find... <gasps> what is that? Is that a riddle block? What? Oh my gosh, no way, that is legit a riddle block. You know how it goes. We find a riddle block, that means we have to answer the riddle to be able to continue the episode. If we can't get it right, it all ends here. All right, so guys, I, I found a riddle. It's a Minecraft riddle. I want you to do your best and answer the riddle. Solve it down in the comments below here. Here's the riddle. Steve has nothing but a stone axe, eight wooden planks, and four sticks in his inventory. What is the other item that Steve has in his inventory? Oh, yeah, 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 that's right, that's right. There is one more item inside of the inventory, not just the axe, the planks, and everything that I just told you a second ago. Right now, I want you to try your best. Solve the riddle down in the comments below. While you're headed down there, firmly tap the like button. Subscribe if you're new. Hi, hey. And well, best of luck to you. And so, staircase. Just a short bit of digging later. And by short, I actually kind of mean a lot. Like, <laughs> this was a lot of digging. Anyways, just a little bit of digging later, and I should be right near the spawner. Spawner, oh, yeah. Spawner, spawner, you beautiful baby. I missed you. It's been so long. I think if I remember correctly. Ah, uh, yes. If I remember correctly, I left all of this stuff over here. So once you either made it back to the spawner that you found a couple episodes ago, or found yourself a brand new fresh zombie spawner, you're basically good to go. It is a very, very good and smart idea to set up a temporary working area when working on this farm. I'm running back and forth right now because I'm I'm an indecisive guy. I, I can't decide where I want to set it up. <laughs> Somebody help, please. Yeah, what the heck? We'll set it up right here for now. Now, in this temporary work area, I highly recommend putting three things down. You put a crafting table down, you put a stone cutter down, and you place a chest down. If you had to make your way back down to the spawner, kind of like I did, like you made a big staircase, you're probably going to be full. Like, you got blocks all over the place. It's always a great idea, before working on any build, to clear out the inventory a little bit so you can see what blocks you have in your inventory and what you're working with here. Now, the second thing you need to do as soon as you find a spawner, set up a working area, is light it up. You want to make sure you got torches all over the spawner room, but also the caves nearby. If a creeper were to have spawned, like right over there, well, let's just say this whole operation will be kaput. Now, as soon as the spawner is gone, it, it's gone. There's no way to get it back. You need to protect this thing with your life. We also, to assure this thing continues to run, need to put a slab on top of the spawner. Spawners are a little bit, um, they're kind of complex. Spawners are both one of the oldest things in Minecraft, but also one of the best things in Minecraft. If you know how to work with these things, they can provide you with tons of experience and drops. Now, for today's episode, we're talking about zombie spawners, so we'll specifically talk about that a little bit more. A zombie spawner has a spawning radius of about four blocks out in each direction from it. Going up and down, it's going to be a little bit smaller. So long as we clear out two blocks above and below this thing, we'll be more than good to go. Now, a spawner spawning radius is basically the area in which the spawner will be able to drop mobs into the world. Our spawning radius for the spawner is going to be centered around the spawner itself. Our zombie spawner spawn radius is basically going to be the area inside of these stone block markers. By removing any blocks that would be sitting inside of this box, say stone or cobblestone, will open up more space for the zombies to spawn. So after we clear out room around the spawner for the spawner to actually spawn, it'll try and spawn mobs. But there are more conditions. Condition number one is players. Take a look at the spawner. We're really, really far away from it. There's no particles. As soon as we move within 16 blocks of this thing, though, the particles begin. And if you actually look really closely, like taking a spyglass, we might be able to see it. Yeah, yeah, you see the zombie spinning in a circle? That means the spawner is active. When the spawner is active, it can actually spawn mobs. The only reason zombies aren't dropping in here is because it's way too bright. Light, ooh, another kind of complex mechanic, but long story short today, as long as we can get the light level everywhere within the spawning box of this spawner, so four blocks out in every direction, as long as we can get the light level on every single one of those blocks, air block, solid block, or not, as long as we can raise that light level up to 12 everywhere around this spawner, 
then no mobs will be able to spawn. Now, a great way to make sure that happens is to grab torches and place a torch on every single side of the spawner. And then if you have walls that are farther away, maybe place some torches on the walls too. Oh yeah, and a mob spawner, unlike other mob spawning mechanics, uh, this thing can basically just drop mobs in in the air. It doesn't need to have like a solid block. As long as I had all other conditions met, this spawner would technically be able to spawn a zombie right there, mid-air. All right, and so for our quick basic spawner rundown today, I think that's gonna just about cut it. Other spawners, like for example, the blaze spawner, they're gonna have different spawning mechanics. We'll be talking a whole lot more about these things in this series. A spawner farm, spawner farm. We found a spawner, we lit it up, we put a slab on top of this thing. And now it's time to dig a room out. From the spawner, in every single flat direction, we need to go four blocks out and then make our wall. Technically speaking, for the ceiling, it only needs to be two blocks above the spawner, but seeing as my ceiling is already three blocks, I mean, why fill it in when I could dig it out? Early game, more blocks. Ooh, chef's kiss. Depending on how your spawner spawned in, you might have to come back in and fill blocks in around the outside of the spawner. For example, over here, we're open to the caves, and to actually make this farm work, we're gonna wanna cut it off from the caves. But hey, hey more on that in a minute. Three, two, one, let's mine. You call me the craziest man in the world. You call me the man Focus on all the wrong things. You call me whatever you want to call me. It doesn't matter. They're all just names. Uh, so I dug my room out right here. I think it looks really, really nice. But but I think I might also maybe want to make a window into this room so I can like see what's happening. I think that would be really, really cool. To make that window thing look even better and like the inside of the room, everything like that, I'm going to care about what this room actually looks like. Instead of just like patching the wall up right here, cutting it off from the cave with plain old cobblestone, kind of lame, what I think I'm going to do is use a furnace over here, smelt up some of this beautiful deep slate block, and then after it's done being smelted up, I take the beautiful deep slate block and move it over to the wall and basically put it back. This is going to make sure the room looks really, really nice, but that's totally unimportant. Next up, unfortunately, terribly, it's a little bit more digging for us. We'll start over here by the spawner. We're going to go one block right there, then we're going to go two block right there, three block, and then four block. The faster we can move our zombies away from this mob spawner, the better. You see, this mob spawner will attempt to spawn mobs about every half minute or so, sometimes more, sometimes less. If there are mobs still idling around near the spawner, it sometimes will fail to spawn even more mobs. For example, let's say I was a zombie, it spawned me, and then I just stood here and stood here and stood here, didn't do anything, then it tried to spawn more mobs. Well, because I'm a zombie and I'm in the spawning box, it can't spawn more zombies. To assure that there are no mobs near the spawner, and also go ahead and give myself a lot of extra building blocks, I go ahead and dig this thing four blocks below the spawner. Everywhere. So, uh, back to digging for me. You know, uh, now that I think about it, it's kind of funny. We jumped into this project today, started setting up a spawner, talked about mechanics and everything like that, but I never even really talked about why you would maybe want to do this, and more specifically, why I'm doing this here in our world today. There are a couple different reasons you would maybe want to set up a spawner farm inside of your world. Reason number one, experience. With a continuous flow of experience, you'll be able to enchant and, you know, just have levels easily. Maybe mend your tools up. Of course, with the spawner farm, it's also all about the drops. Every single type of spawner farm, skeleton, zombie, spider, blaze, whatever you want to call it, they all have their different uses, the drops. For us today, the reason we're building this spawner farm in our world here together is really a combination of both of those things. I want to have easy experience so we can talk about enchanting and level up the tools, but I also like the idea of rotten flesh. Later on, when we start talking a little bit more about villagers and things like that, having a good supply of rotten flesh can come in handy big time. A tiny bit of digging later and take a look at this, my friends. This right here is another beautiful reason you should build a spawner farm. From digging out all this stuff, so many blocks. We're set when it comes to building with deep slate for a minute. Now my spawner room over here is looking pretty nice. It's a nice solid square of deep slate. Polished, smooth, and natural deep slate all over the place. Next up, we need to pick a side of this room to move the mobs over to. Hey, 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 hey. by the way, I put a slab on the bottom of this thing just to... For aesthetics, baby. I want to look good. Anyways, we gotta pick a side of the room that we wanna move the mobs over to. Now thinking about where the base is, I'm pretty sure up on the surface, the base is like straight off that way. With that in mind, when I set up like a, a grinding room, I would like the grinding room to be a little bit closer to like the rest of the base. You know, spawn, everything like that. So what I think I wanna do is move my mobs maybe over to that corner over there. With that in mind, go over here to the opposite corner that you wanna move them to and drop water. 
if your measurements are correct, the water should flow all the way over to one side like that, but not touch the other corner. This right here is where we're going to dig down and make a new trench. This trench is going to be one block deeper and it's going to go all the way across the room from one corner over to the target corner, which is going to be over here. Now we'll go ahead and pick this water up and check this out. Water, it still flows eight blocks. If I put it in that corner, it goes from that corner all the way to here. Lads, laddies, everybody, it's time for what I would like to call a little bit of water sorcery here. We're going to need fences and signs. Fences, signs, and one block of soul sand. With our water flowing all the way over here, we see this block. It doesn't reach all the way right there. This is where the start of our elevator trap begins. You see, in Minecraft, fall damage, it's a thing. Fall damage is also a thing for mobs like zombies, skeletons, creepers, literally anything that falls to take a little bit of damage. If we could have the mob spawn from a spawner and be funneled over into some kind of elevator, then we raise them up like really, really high and drop them all the way back down. They'll be brought down to lower health. Then they're easier to take out. If we raise a zombie up about 21 or so blocks, 20, and then drop it, it'll be brought down to like one or two hits, just like that. In your spawner room, you got a trench going all the way along one side. You're going to put water in the back corner. The other corner is going to be an elevator. On that elevator corner, start by digging down one block. Jump down in here. Maybe place a torch so everybody watching can see. And then <laughs> dig into the wall just like this. We're going to go ahead and dig down right there and place a fence. Or technically, you could put a wall. Then on the three blocks above that, we're going to open it up. On the block right behind that one, even with this trench, we're going to put a soul sand block. The soul sand is going to mark where the elevator is. The elevator is going to go straight up, like 20 or whatever blocks. We've got a trench right here. We drop down one block. Then we have a fence down there. Then we got soul sand. Then we got a solid block right there, and we open that block up. By opening that block up, the water is going to actually suck everything into the elevator. Now it's sign time. We don't need a sign on that block. We need a sign on that block. We need a sign on that block. Then we're going to go ahead and open this one up so the elevator is nice and functional and put one more sign right there. Finally, to get all of this ready to actually run, we're going to jump back up and dig that block out. And when we do that, if we put water right over here in this corner, it's going to flow, bump down, and flow right over there. If I was a zombie, I would move into this trench uh, aimlessly, wander over here, and then bump up because of the fence right there. I get pulled up into the elevator, sent all the way to the top, and then I drop and fall. And then I drop and fall. Now, I, next up, we're going to need to set up some kind of grinding room. A room where we're going to sand and take the zombies out. In a second, we'll talk all about setting up the elevator, but first we want to figure out where we're going to drop the zombies to. Wherever we're going to end up dropping the zombies to needs to be in line with the elevator to make sure it works. You got to think about what you want to do for the design, but if you don't care about the design, what I recommend doing is from the back of your elevator, go three, maybe two blocks. For me today, with the proper configurations configured out and set up, I think what I want to do is end up dropping my mobs on this block. It's going to be 44, negative 37, negative 17. The most important coordinate to us right now, though, is going to be that middle Y coordinate. Unfortunately, I had to do it too, but it's time for math. Whatever that Y coordinate is, or that block that you're going to end up dropping your mobs onto, you need to add 22 to it. My number is negative 37. I go ahead and add 22 to it. Quick math, it's negative 15. That negative 15 number for us today is very important. It might be different for you, but for me, I need to set the top of my dropper up at negative 15. Next up, what I'm going to do is get the exact coordinates of this soul sand block. 50, negative 38, negative 17. I'm going to go ahead and send those in chat so I don't lose them. I'm going to move back over to my block right here, and I'm going to start digging up. I already started digging up a little bit. I'm just going to basically continue the process. Now, this is, I'm sorry. It's going to be really, really dark, but all I'm doing is digging straight up all the way to negative 15. Place a couple more blocks and negative 15. Oh, negative 15. Now, using my innate willpower and sense of direction, I remember that this is the way to 53. Oh, no way. It actually is. <laughs> I'm genius. 50. It's the way to 50. Using the coordinates that we sent in chat, we're going to work our way back over to wherever that soul sand block once was. Once we make it all the way over to that soul sand block, I'm going to realize that I forgot a sign. I, I need a sign or a fence gate. Two things to do up here. While you're up here, place a sign above wherever your dropper is going to be. You could have light up here. You could, and it doesn't matter. We're going to grab a bucket of water and dump it at the top of the other end of this top dropper here. This needs to be right above where the soul sand is eventually going to sit. Then we're going to swim all the way over here and start digging down. This could be... It could be a little bit difficult, potentially dangerous if you're not careful. Don't drown. Another way to do it here, if you're not really a fan of moving around in water and potentially drowning yourself, uh, no big deal. Just go back over to your room and go on top of the soul sand and dig straight up. 
sooner or later, somehow, your water should end up dropping all the way down exactly on top of your soul saying, we gotta go, we can't drown. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, it, it really wasn't that far. No big deal. All right, now check this out. We put water in this back corner. It's going to flow all the way over to the elevator. Again, assuming I'm a zombie, I move over. And this time, because of the currents we set up, we're pulled right into the elevator. But I don't go anywhere. Ah, kelp, kelp. Wonderful kelp, please do not have let me down. We're going to need kelp for this step. It's going to make it a whole lot easier. If you don't have kelp, you could use water buckets after water bucket. But, oh, I got kelp. Oh, it's wonderful. Forget the buckets. For this part of the project, we're going to need a little bit of kelp. Like, probably 20-something. But depending on how your elevator is set up, if you're doing something a little bit different with it, you might need a little bit more. Or less, I guess. Back down here at the spawner room, it might be a good idea to pull that water out or block it off for now. With kelp, we're going to go over and plant one on the soul sand block. Once we plant one kelp on the soul sand block, we move into here, we'll notice once we pull it out that we'll bump up a little bit. That's going to basically activate the elevator. Now, if I had access to a bunch of extra bone meal, I could stand at the bottom and just bone meal the kelp all the way up to the top. But unfortunately, I don't. So for now, what I'm going to do is back inside of this room, I'm going to take these two blocks out where the dropper is and put water right there. That way, I'll be able to ride the elevator up to the top and drop down safely without anything bad ever happening. Back over inside of the spawner room with our kelp right here, we're going to jump into the elevator and just spam kelp. We're going to swim all the way up to the top planting kelp the whole way. By planting kelp, we're creating proper water sources and not just flowing water. Long story short, for a bubble column to properly activate, we need proper water sources and not flowing water blocks. Back over down here, we'll go ahead and pull that out and put those back. We have some extra blocks right here. Now, before I do anything else with this farm, let's talk a little bit about the room that we're going to set up. Over here, near where you're going to end up dropping your mobs, is a great idea to set up some kind of cozy room or non-cozy factory place or whatever, but you set up a room to actually enjoy your spawner and use it. Inside of this room, there are so many different things that are a great idea to have. I mean, we're talking a bed, we're talking a grindstone, we're talking furnace crafting table, maybe enchantment setup, all that cool, wonderful stuff. For today's episode, all that I'm really going to do here is get the bare bones in. All I'm going to do here is dig out a room to exist in. And maybe we'll slap a little bit of details on it, but all I want is a room. Now, while I tackle our final bit of digging for today's episode, I'd like to take a look real quick at the comment of the day. Today's comment of the day is beautifully generous when it comes to my storage rooms. <laughs> Thank you, you're way too kind though. I, I think they're okay. But storage space, yes, 100%. We're going to need a storage room really, really soon. So earlier on, I said something funny about taking on a dragon by episode 20, or 25. I might be reconsidering that. I don't know. Whew, wow, a lot of building later that took a whole lot of time, and I did it. I finally got a brand new room down here dug out. It's pretty big, too. Now, like I mentioned a little bit earlier on, today we're going to leave this room pretty bare bones. I do have a pretty good vision as to what I want to do with this room, though, and then it includes something very, very magical. Maybe you'll uh, be able to guess what that is, but anyways, look at this. From digging out this room, I got so much. Deep Slate is beautiful. I'm going to be able to use this stuff for so many builds. I also went ahead and took some time to move all of my setup that was previously up there inside of the cave down into this proper room. Now, this ladder is reaching up to over here that then reaches over to the staircase. Eventually, when we fully finish up the details of that room, I'm going to have a clean way in and out. But for now, this will be the way. Spawner, spawner, oh, spawner, where were we? Back over here inside of the room, the kelp is still sitting on the soul sand. If I walk over here and punch the bottom one, the bubble column will activate. All of the items should be rocketed up to the top. We can throw something in and test it. Back over in the proper room, give it a second, and everything, if it's set up perfectly, it should end up falling down to me. We just got to give it a little bit of time. There are, like, two things left to do to actually activate this whole spawner. Thing number one, water. We're going to need solid water currents all the way along the back wall of this room. Using water buckets, we'll go ahead and dump a ton of water in. Once you get the water in, other than that one block right there, it should flow all the way over to the front. Over in this back corner, if it's not here yet, place a water source and dig this out and let the water flow to the front of this thing. Now, you got to be careful. It's almost go time. Carefully, quickly, and smoothly, we're going to move around this room and punch out every single torch. You want to be quick, you want to be fast, you want to be clean with this one. As soon as it starts to get dark in here, zombies may begin to spawn. After the zombies start to spawn, you're going to need to watch out for him. You might have to dodge him into water. The zombie boy, he jumps in, but he's not a chance for me. I quickly move over here, I break these blocks out. When I break that one out, I need to make sure the water current's actually fixed. With the water currents fixed up like that, going all the way over to the elevator, and the elevator's set up, mobs should be moving over to the elevator. And then going up and dropping down. 
All that I need to do is get out of their line of sight. Right now, the zombies can see me. They lock onto me, which is going to mess it up. But look at this. <laughs> you can kind of see in the corner there. The zombies move up. They move over. They land right there with an iron sword. No enchantments at all. What are enchantments? I didn't talk about them yet. We walk over here. We swing. And oh, you're gone. <laughs> you're gone. And you're gone, too. Now, uh, one thing to know is armor. Armor can stop uh, fall damage. Depending on the armor, and specifically the enchantments here, they might have, like, feather falling or something, so we take less damage, but... Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm too strong. And friends, just like that, our spawner is set up fully beautiful and good to go. It's a zombie farm. The zombies are gonna spawn in there, they're gonna go over to the elevator, go up, and then fall all the way down. Baby zombies included. Baby children zombies included. Ah, so on that note right there, we gotta add something to this farm. This setup will work basically the same for a skeleton one, but for a zombie one here, I can hear a baby right now, actually. You gotta put slabs right there. If you don't put slabs there, the baby will fall, and then it'll be out in this open room. And that will be absolutely terrible, potentially. So let's give it a second. Uh, sooner or later here, child, small child should small. Fall, yeah, yeah, fall, small child will fall, and look at that, it's trapped in there. Can't go anywhere, oh, it's beautiful. Design, design, you know me. I'm all about the aesthetics. I want to make this thing look really, really beautiful. I also want to know this enchantment. Ah, interesting. Eventually, we will 100% be coming back in here and making this look beautiful. And for now, though, I'd like to talk about a very useful block, tinted glass. So the spawner's whole thing is darkness. Because it's dark in there, the spawner is actually working and spawning mobs. I want a window. I would love to see this thing actually working in action. However, as soon as I dig this open, even if I put normal glass, it's letting light in there. You can see the room is like actually bright. Tinted glass, that's where this stuff comes in. With tinted glass, we get the best of both worlds. We can see through, but it's dark. Tinted glass is one of the coolest blocks to be added in Minecraft 1.17. At least I, I, I think that's when it was. By combining amethyst with glass in the crafting table and then swapping out the deep slate for tinted glass, now I get this beautiful window to the room right here. I can see it working. Like zombies are dropping in there, but they can't see me and it's nice and dark. To finish up the wonderful farm for today's episode, I think all I want to do is go back up to the surface or somewhere, find a little bit more sand, and replace this entire wall right here with tinted glass, or basically the whole wall. So let's see, we'll go ahead and take these two blocks out, that'll look really nice, and we're gonna need four more plus uh, five at the top, I need nine. Oh, it's the amethyst, the problem. Well, on that note, while we're down here, why don't we just try and find that amethyst shield? I think I'm pretty close. Now, the one thing to know about your newfound fancy zombie farm, while you're close to this thing, the zombies will continuously spawn. However, if I drop a bunch of zombies down here in the queue and then walk away, they're all gonna despawn, unless they're holding an item that I dropped or, or something like that. Ooh, enchanted chest plate with fire protection one. All right, fine. Okay, so back over here inside of the caves, I definitely remember the amethyst shield being down here, and I thought I remember it being relatively close too. 100%, it was like on the way out of the cave. I remember that. Let me mark this bonnet really quick so I don't like accidentally lose it or something. It's gonna be straight that way. But I think if I remember correctly, I go up the staircase and I go this way for a little bit. Maybe I spin around this way. I know it's up. Up is the way I need to go. Not this up? Maybe it's down this cave? Continuing down this long hallway, and there it is, right in front of my eyes. A little bit of iron, I forgot, and ah, amethyst, wonderful. I need a little bit more of you. You're coming with me. Back over in the safety of my zombie spawner room, let's finish this up for today. We'll go ahead and fill this whole wall up with tinted glass other than the border. I'm gonna do something different. Over here to clean this up, I got a trick. So first off, we're gonna wanna be careful here. This is gonna require breaking the elevator just for a quick second. We'll take that out, we'll place a solid block there. We'll put a trap door right there. We'll take this out, put another trap door right there. Then we'll go ahead and pull this block out. The water should flow back in and then we can close the trap doors. Just like that, I've streamlined the elevator. It doesn't stick out so ugly anymore. We just got the trap doors. As a salute to all of you who made it all the way to the end of today's episode, one final buff, check this. We're gonna be very careful here because we will break our way back into the spawn. We'll place a little bit of light and light this thing up. Back inside of this room, very carefully here, we're gonna break out blocks and swap them for staircases. By swapping these blocks right here on the ledge of this top edge with staircases, zombies will actually get stuck less. 
So it'll never really be much of a problem with this farm without the staircases, but with the staircases lighting that edge right there, they'll move a little bit quicker. Like they won't linger on this block and try and go against the current. Anyways, though, we'll quickly remove those torches, get out of that room, close it back up, and the zombies spawner. We're good to go. By using this thing for just a little bit of time, we can now quickly, easily, and very, very safely work our way up to beautiful level 30. Thank you all so much for watching. Patron gang, big shout out Arlo, aka Bobby Bobby, Minecraft Mojo.com, Ape Marie23, Zvam, Skelly Wampus, CK, Michael H, and the great Vegeta, you're the best. Next up, check out last episode. We went to the nether, it was beautiful. It's been me, Waddles, and I will see you tomorrow with even more levels than ever.